The Intelligent Money British GT Championship is having fun in the sun this weekend. We are on the Algarve. We're at Portimao, and it is another new circuit for the championship. It's another of those flyaway events for the teams, and it promises to be for a three-hour race. Absolutely fantastic. Welcome, then, to Portimao. Welcome to the Intelligent Money British GT Championship. Welcome also Steph Wentworth, who's going to be in the pit lane. And there are worse places to be at the moment than in the sunshine of Portugal, aren't there? Exactly. I mean, I'm sure the weather is not so ni nice in the UK right now, so it's very nice that we've been able to fly across the, uh, off across the sea here and come to Portsmouth. Now, we've had qualifying yesterday in the two parts, the grid based on the amalgamated time of the two drivers, and that gave us one or two surprises. You were talking to the drivers uh, during the course of the session, and, of course, cars that maybe were quickest in Q1 weren't at the top of the times ultimately because of that aggregation. Absolutely, and we've actually just seen the P1 car roll up, and that's got Miguel Ramos in it, uh, and he is the only Portuguese driver on the grid, uh, which is wonderful here in Portuguese and there are in Portugal, and there are quite a few fans in the crowd, and hopefully he'll be looking for a uh, a good result for them. Absolutely, uh, you're going to be busy for three hours, so. Have, as well, I upstairs have a break for the moment. I'm going to go for a walk. This is a rare chance to be on the grid. So Ollie, my cameraman, is going to come with me and we're going to see who we can find um, down on the grid because the cars are coming to the grid at the end of that formation lap. The car on pole position, the Garage 59 McLaren, that is going to be started uh, by Miguel Ramos. Now, let me see whether I can dive in before they put the silver foil over the top of the car just to keep Miguel cool. Um, let's have a go. Miguel, home track and pole position looking good for you. I hope everything goes well. It was great to be at home and start from the first. Let's see how the race goes. It's a long race. And it's going to be tough in these temperatures. Good luck to Miguel Ramos then starting on pole position. Uh, let's see who else we might be able to grab on the grid. You look across the side of the McLaren, the team's getting themselves ready. The two C's squad are on the outside of the front row. Uh, the car is on its way. I'm looking to see if I can find Johnny Adam. Yes, I can, who is going to take over this car. Uh, now then, this is better than being up in Scotland or in the UK. Look, the sun is shining and, and it's going to be fairly hot in the car. Yeah, it's going to be a warm race. You know, perfect weather today. A bit warmer than yesterday, but, um, you know, we've done a bit of prep with the car for that temperature increase. But yeah, car feels really good on the race run. Uh, it's been really close in qualifying between quite a few cars, so it's going to be a good tight race. Um, we have an extra 15 seconds in the last stop, so for us today, it's, you know, if we can bag a podium, it's, it's job achieved. You know. You've got this long pit straight, heavy braking zone at turn one. Is, is brakes going to be an issue late race or not a problem? I think we should be OK. We're not too bad. Maybe some other cars might suffer. I mean, it's a three-hour race in this heat. There is a few big stops to the lap, um, but it's a good mix. And, you know, everyone's obviously got their own race to fight for, but traffic management's key as well today. And there's always the chance of a safety car, which throws any calculation up in the air. Yeah, you know, I think there possibly might be a few today, but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the key for us is just to be quite clever on strategy, have a good race pace, and just see if we can get a bit of luck at the end, just try and get a good result. Johnny, good luck. Thank you. So that's the car that's going to be second on the grid. James Cottingham starts. Let's keep walking. Uh, uh, now, here's a man we need to talk to. Stefan Rattel has been racing this weekend. More importantly, happy birthday. Thank you. It's beautiful to spend your birthday <laughs> on such a beautiful racetrack with such a beautiful grid. And also, I'm just out of my race car, so it's been a, a very good day. And a podium yesterday, yeah. so I couldn't be happier than that. And look at this grid as well. Fantastic. You must be very proud of the, the state British GT is in. I mean, British GT is, is a runaway success. I mean, it's yeah. been like this year on year on year. We suffered a bit for the two COVID years, and then it bounced back to where it was before. The competition is great, a perfect split between GT3 and GT4. It's like the perfect championship for us. <laughs> In all our collections, it's a, it's a good boy of the family. Long may it continue. Stefan, happy birthday. Enjoy the race. Uh, who else can we go and find? Barwell Motorsport is worth uh, venturing to. Let's head this way uh, because uh, the Barwell team tend to excel when it comes to strategy. He says looking for... Mark Lemmer, who's the team principal, can't find him. Let's grab a driver instead. Quickly, Sandy Mitchell is standing over here. Um, what are your chances three hours ahead of you? Uh, well, if we look at the three-hour races we've done the last few years, we'd say quite good. But obviously, a new circuit to British GT. Temps are extremely high today, probably the hottest of the three days. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, these races are always a little bit about the strategy and the safety car calls and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So a little bit into the unknown. We've not raced here before, but I think all the drivers are loving it. I mean, yeah. it's an amazing location for the families to come to, and uh, the track's just something else. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be fun. Fingers crossed. Good luck. Sandy Mitchell, then, one of Barwell's two Lamborghini drivers. We'll talk to more drivers in a moment. Before that, let's catch up with Steph. 
I am joined with Rafa Martinez, who is of Rafa Racing Club, one of the uh, one of the sponsors of this championship. Rafa, it's great to be out here, isn't it, in the baking sunshine? It is. It's actually an incredible town to be in. It's just a beautiful track. The grid is massive and a good crowd, and it is a little bit warm, but it's breezy enough to make a you know make it nice to be out. But yeah, it's it's quite warm today. And what are you making of the championship so far this year? Because it's very, very close. Uh, the GT4 championship could be wrapped up as early as uh, at the end of this race. So it's, it's quite incredible, no? It is. It's quite incredible. You know, it's, it's fun and competitive. And I love to see the mix up between the GT3s and the GT4 as well. So just really excited to actually be at my first one physically. Uh, I've been watching it for years on TV. And to actually be part of the tournament or the series, I mean, as a sponsor, by really being physically here and walking the, you know, the grid is, is you know, even, even more special. Right, well, it's great to have you. Enjoy the race. Thank you. Back Thank to you, you. Adders. Steph, we've come up the grid to Andrew Howard's Aston Martin, um, the ice cream magnate. We came looking for ice cream. We've not done terribly well, but we have got a driver. Uh, Andrew, what are the chances for a good result for an Aston Martin around here? Uh, well, I mean, it's a long race, so there's lots to happen and lots of things to do. It's, uh, it's a tricky circuit, so, um, you know, hopefully we'll be OK. So we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. Let's have a word with Nicky Tim as well, who is by the side of the car. Welcome back to British GT, Nicky. And uh, I suppose the pressure's on here. You come with your stellar reputation. You're going to have to really haul the car up the order. We're, we're relying on you. Yeah, we're trying to do my best. It's uh, fun to be back here in the championship, seeing some of the old faces. Uh, so, yeah, doing a one-off is not a bad place to do it here in Portugal. So, uh, and Andrew is in a good mood. He's focused. And uh, as long as he's having fun, then uh, everything is fine. So, yeah. The most important thing is obviously that you guys have fun, so I, I try to provide the, the show for it. And who's this? That's Junior, <laughs> little boy, brought the family here. British GT in 16 years' time, yeah? Nicky team, the family, good luck. Uh, let's see if we can grab one more interview before we need to get off the grid. Uh, making Golly work hard. He's got three hours running up and down a pit lane yet, still to come. But uh, where else can we go? McLaren, possibly. Uh, Mark Radcliffe's car. Uh, let's see if we can have a very quick word. Mark, before you go racing, um, this is going to be a tough race, isn't it, in these temperatures? Yeah, very tough, pal. This is going to test fitness of everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot warmer today than we've tested in over the last few days and less windy at the minute as well, yeah. which also affects the first, uh, so the last corner of turn 15 quite a lot. So, um, yeah, it'll, it's definitely going to make it hard, these temperatures. Weekend's been going well so far. Yeah, I, I didn't have a great quality. I, I, I caught up a, a Lamborghini and I abandoned my best lap, which is a shame. There was five tenths there uh, on that lap extra, so we would have been probably fourth or fifth without that uh, abandoned lap. So, uh, but anyway, it's a three-hour race. We'll make the best of it. Good luck. Mark Radcliffe then starting in the McLaren that he shares with Rob Bell. i better get to a box. And in the meantime, let's catch back up again with Steph. I'm with Julian, who is the uh, CEO of the title sponsor, Intelligent Money, here. It's fantastic to be in Portugal. It's the first time ever that British GT has come here. Are you enjoying it? Absolutely. First time in its 31-year uh, history, and I live here, so it's come to my home ground. It's brilliant. Excellent. Uh, what are you uh, excited to see in the race, should we say? Uh, it's, it's just it's a very packed grid. I think everything's going to be very exciting. A few cars I've got my eye on. A few teams not here today, which is a shame. We'll miss Team Brit, uh, but uh, uh, just generally excited, yeah. All right, fantastic. I can feel your excitement emanating and feel the excitement on the grid. Let's throw to Adders and Dan Harper, who took a lap around Portimao. The Century Motorsport GT3 BMW M4 is another potential winning car this afternoon, and it's to be driven by Darren Lung and Dan Harper. Dan, let's talk about the circuit first of all, because it's a circuit that's relatively new to most people on the grid, but there's an awful lot in it. Lots of elevation, lots of corners as well. Real challenge for a driver. Yeah, like you say, lots of elevation, high speed corners, tight hairpins. Um, and very like blind braking zone, so it's tricky, um, especially for, for the AM drivers that maybe haven't a lot of experience here. Um, so even for me, it's difficult, um, and I have a bit of experience here from, from last year in Creventic. Um, so yeah, it's a difficult one. The temperatures are high. Um, thankfully, the heat wave hasn't hit yet, um, so it's, it's still bearable. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a, a tricky race and it's, uh, it's a really fun circuit. This long pit straight is obviously a very fast part of the circuit, but then you've got a hard braking zone at the end. Three hours of racing, how much of an issue are brakes going to be come that last half an hour? So? Yeah, we're definitely going to have to take care of them and keep them in the back of the mind. Um, for sure, there's, like you say, loads of hard braking zones uh, from high speed areas. Um, so 
we're really going to have to take care of that. It's also hard on the tyres, um, so maybe up to an hour stint at certain points, depending on safety cars if they if they stay stay away. Um, so it's uh, definitely a lot of things to think about, and uh, it's it's a long race. Uh, let's have a look at a lap of the circuit. Talk us round the Portimao circuit. Yep. So just exiting the last corner, on border M4 GT3, uh, down the main street. Um, time to breathe, relax, get ready for the first big uh, braking zone. Just over the hill, down two gears, get it in as close as you can to the curb. Be careful on the track limits. It's very curb, uh, very easy to run wide. Then get it as straight as possible for turn three. Again, slow second gear, keep it to the right here as much as you can to open up the next left, the tiniest little lift, get as close as you can to the grass, be careful on track limits again on the exit, down the straight, up a few gears, then a trip difficult braking zone that's quite bumpy, um, get it slowed down, second gear into the, to the apex, um, then accelerating back up, easy again to, to get wide there on the track limits, especially in qualifying, they, they were taking a lot of care there. High speed here, fourth gear, careful and track limits in the mid corner, straight braking, get it in again. This is a really cool corner actually. Um, again, easy to run wide there. Then down the big hill, up the hill, fifth gear here, very fast. It's just about flat out in qualifying, keeping it to the left, trickiest braking zone. Um, then get it into the apex, down a few gears, second, second gear, down the hill. Um, then back through the gears again. This is gonna be a, a good overtaking opportunity, I think. Um, second gear again into the apex left hander um, then come into the penultimate corner again it's a it's a good overtaking opportunity I think uh, come the race um, uh, there's a couple of different lines you can take you can go wide you can cut back tight um, so it'll be interesting to see what others do there and the last high-speed corner uh, the, my favorite corner on the circuit fifth gear bumpy in the middle and, uh, and that's a lap of, uh, of Porto Mayo So Dan Harper's lap in the BMW, well there are many more of those to come. The rolling lap is underway. Let's quickly look at the start drivers and how they line up. Miguel Ramos is on pole, James Cotting alongside ahead of Ian Loggy and Sean Balfe with Darren Lund and Andrew Howard on the third row. Mark Radcliffe is alongside Mark Sanson, then you've got Mark Smith and Matt Topham on the next row ahead of Chris Hart and John Ferguson winner last time out at Snetterton. He's ahead of Kevin Say and Ian Campbell with the GT3 part of the grid, rounded out by Lucky Carer who wasn't here up until this morning so he had to start at the back anyway and uh, Tim Kresic uh, who's got some behavioural warning points that put him to the back of GT3 ahead of Andre Borodin who's had a new chassis and a new engine. Uh, then in GT4, Josh Miller on pole alongside Jack Brown, then it's Dan Vaughan in the McLaren, not Porsche for a change. Aston Miller alongside from Freddie Tomlinson and Harry George. Then you've got the BMWs, Carl Cavers and Michael Johnston, ahead of the Mustangs, Will Moore and Eric Evans. Then it's McLaren and Ginetta, Ian Goff and James Townsend, ahead of all Ginetta Row, Tom Holland and Ian Duggan. And McDermott's Mercedes is on the back row, and so also is the Kavijundu started car that didn't pay, take part in qualifying because it needed uh, gearbox. Uh, replacement to gearbox change and the work being done on that meant they missed qualifying so that is a rattle through the grid uh, quick things to bear in mind the cars in the top three in their class at Snetterton carry the so-called compensation pit stop time that's to be served at the last pit stop everybody must make three stops and each of those regulation pit stops has to have a change of driver so forget double stinting or anything like that pit stop under the regulations driver change GT3 pit stops are uh, a little bit faster than the GT4 pit stops, 145 versus 175 seconds. And if you're a silver class car within GT4, you get an extra 14 seconds on every pit stop. So that does give the emphasis really to the pro-ams over a long race like this. But of course, that's counted by the speed of the silvers. It's all part of the fascination. Uh, add to that what they do in fuel. Do you put, if you're, if you're planning on a short stint, do you fuel heavy or do you fuel light? Do you gamble on a safety car? We'll find out. What do you do with tyres? Are you going to run a, a, a new set for your arm and make him feel comfortable, or for your pro who can get the most out of them? There's an awful lot extra in this for the teams to factor in, and we are about to see how it all unravels for round seven of the Intelligent Money British GT Championship. First time the series has been to Portimao, and we are about to go racing with Miguel Ramos and James Cottingham on the front row of the grid. The two grids, the GT4 cars lag back just a little bit. The race director, Peter Daly, will give the instruction if he's happy for the race to get underway now, and he's blast off. The McLaren of Miguel Ramos then steals the advantage, gets ahead of James Cottingham with Ian Loggy in the silver Mercedes, the reigning champion, having a look on the inside line as well as they drop down towards turn one. McLaren, Mercedes, Mercedes, Lamborghini because the Barwell number 78 car is up into fourth place. Then the quick starting Sean Balfe 
sharing with Sandy Mitchell, who we heard from on the grid. Then it's Darren Lund and Andrew Howard, fifth and sixth BMW ahead of Aston Martin as they wriggle their way uphill for the first time out of turn four. It all looks clean so far in the pack as the GT4 battle rages on there. Dan Vaughan in the yellow McLaren, the Team Parker Racing Run Elite Motorsport owned car. This is the view from the Eric Evans, Matt Cowley, Mustang, Eric Evans at the wheel of it down at turn five. The GT3 leaders go through top two, getting away just a little. Ramos then, the Portuguese driver, leads on home soil with James Cottingham, who's raced here in Historics. They tested here last week. He's got track knowledge. He's right up behind Ramos. Kevin Say goes through in number 93, McLaren. And the rest of the field then streams through for this first lap with the DTO McLaren, number 36 there. That's the car with Aston Miller at the wheel of it, being forced a little bit wide. Eric Evans then crawling all over the back of number 22 BMW. Carl Cavers at the wheel, and he in turn is on the attack as well as the leaders come up through turn 12 for the first time. Three hours of racing, and it is McLaren leading the way. Mercedes second, Ramos not getting away from Cottingham. Ian Loggy dropped a length or two, perhaps, on this opening lap of the race. And then in fourth spot, as the cars come back into view, is Sean Balf in the Lamborghini from Barwell. Fifth is Darren Lung. Sixth there, Andrew Howard. Seventh behind him. Looks like being Mark Radcliffe, or possibly now Mark Smith, in fact, in his number 11 McLaren, has wriggled away up the order over the first few corners of the lap. But at the end of lap one, here they come, and it is going to be the McLaren in the lead there. Miguel Ramos leads the way. You're on board with Darren Lung, who comes across the line right on the tail of the Lamborghini. So, McLaren leads the way. Mercedes second. Ramos ahead of Cottingham. Gap back. Third is Ian Loggy. Fourth coming into view. Sean Bell. Fifth, the red BMW of Darren Lung. And behind the GT3 traffic, of course, the GT4 battle. Here it comes down towards turn one. And it looks rather... Mercedes dominated up at the front, but indeed it's an Aston Martin ahead of the Mercs, just for the moment, because you've got uh, the car of number 23, Josh Miller, at the head of GT4. They are racing Aston, then Harry George, and third, Dan Vaughan. So it is Aston, Mercedes, and then McLaren, the top three within the GT4 contest right now, as the leaders drop down to turn five. On board with Darren Lund. He's getting closer and closer to the back of Sean Balfe in that Lamborghini, and looking for a way by as the cars now stream their way up through turn eight, climb the hill. Balf going defensive, that means he's just losing touch slightly with Ian Loggy, who is ahead of him. Through the kink, Craig Jones corner, and then up towards Portimao, turn 10. Darren Lung in that BMW won the Donington 2R race at the end of last year, his first GT3 outing with Alexander Sims, won the 3R equivalent race this year at Silverstone, earlier on in the year equivalent to this three-hour duration, so he must be thinking these long races really play into his hands. This might be a tougher one, but with Dan Harper on board as the co-driver, then that's going to be a very competitive car, no question about it. So the leaders then come through. Downhill comes the BMW. Fifth place at the moment is Darren Lung. He's on the tail of that Lamborghini as they stream through once again. In the background, you can see the GT4 fight building up, but also GT3 as Matt Topham goes ahead of John Ferguson, who's got some damage, I think, on the right-hand side, something flapping on John Ferguson's Mercedes. The car's a little bit twitchy into turn one, so the Snetterton winner in trouble, possibly, as Darren Lund gets up the inside of Sean Bell for that very tight turn three. Andrew Howard in the Aston tries to go through as well, can't do it, as they come up over the brow. Now, Darren Lund has got the momentum, but Sean Balfe covers off the inside line. Darren Lund goes to the outside as they drop down to the hairpin. Andrew Howard looking for a gap to try and go through as well. He goes to the inside of the BMW. Lund can't crack the Lamborghini, but he can fend off the Aston Martin as they climb out of the corner now. Through they come as one, pretty much, for fourth, fifth and sixth. Sean Balfe still can't get the head around him doing an am stint because Sean has been uh, one of the most competitive and a very successful British GT Championship racer for over two decades now. And uh, he is with Sandy Mitchell, Lamborghini factory driver. Darren Lung with Dan Harper, BMW factory driver. That illustrates the strength of the British GT Championship, the number of not only good AMs, good pros, but factory drivers that you have uh, in the entry these days as well. Fastest lap thus far, Miguel Ramos, not really surprising. He's got clear track space ahead of him. A 144.4. Darren Lund, of course, might be able to go quicker were he to be able to get past the traffic. Uh, already the track limit warnings are coming. That's going to be a constant drama, I fear, through this race. It's been the situation through the practice, through qualifying, through other support races this weekend. And so the drivers, and it's perhaps more the AMs, need to keep off the kerbs. The pro drivers know pretty much where the edge, where the line is. Andrew Howard goes through them. The former Mini Melia racer turned double British GT champion. 
and we've had a drama between John Ferguson and 72 Mark Sansom in the other Barwell Lamborghini. That's where the damage has been picked up by John Ferguson in the background there. You can see him and that car having fallen away. Matt Topham goes through on the inside there to get ahead of Mark Smith in the McLaren. So the one that's dropped back out of all of that, Mark Radcliffe uh, in the Optimum Motorsport GT3 McLaren. Matt Topham in the car run by Marcus Klassen's Enduro Motorsport stable. They've changed co-drivers because it was Morgan Tilbrook. He stood down because of business commitments. They've changed from a McLaren to an Aston Martin. Meanwhile, it's getting very Larry in GT4. Look, coming over the timing line, where still leading the way is Josh Miller, but behind him is number 17, Harry George. Then Dan Vaughan in the McLaren. Big dive being made by the McLaren number 90 on the inside line there, Jack Brown. And he, in turn, trying to fend off the challenge of the Mustang and also Carl Cavers. But actually, Mustang number 62, which is the car of Will Moore, has gone ahead. And 61 there, Eric Evans, has dropped back in the queue a little bit, but he's keeping at bay Aston Miller in that DTO Motorsport McLaren. Over the brow they come. And this is where the grunt of the BMWs and the Mustangs carry them closer to the McLaren. Jack Brown, the Caterham racer, the former Caterham racer, is at the helm of that car, leading the championship. And depending on what fortunes the opposition have, could even sew up the championship in this race. When it's a three-hour race as well, of course, the number of points distributed greater than it would be for a one-hour race. The championship has this format of double-header one-hour races, a two-hour race on occasions, or uh, twice a year, these three-hour races. So, on board with Eric Evans. Matt Cowley takes that car over and uh, he knows these cars inside out. That's the GT4 leader getting away a little bit now. So Josh Miller letting everybody else play behind him and hold themselves up and he's starting to build that gap as the car now heads up through turn 13. So he swings into the uh, right-hander of turn 14 as the leaders go by. Number 93 there, the Silver Am Championship leading McLaren. Kevin Say, the Macanese driver starting. Outright race winner in British GT back at Alton Park in 2021 with Tom Onslow Cole. And right now he's chasing Mark Sanson, who in turn is uh, on the tail of John Ferguson. One of the big movers, though, has been Matt Topham, adapting to GT3 from GT4 machinery very, very well. Getting himself up the order. And an incident between Topham and Mark Smith has also now been noted in race control. To the inside there, number 62 Mustang makes a big, big dive. That is Will Moore trying to get himself up past Freddie Tomlinson and the Ginetta force a little bit wide. That opens the door for Will to go through. Does it at turn two? Yes, it does. Mustang goes by Tomlinson way out wide over the kerb. He'll cry that he couldn't do anything else but go wide with a Mustang on the inside, but wide he was nonetheless. And so the 33 strong field works lap five. James Cottingham in second place now has done the fastest lap of the race and he's right with the leader. Side by side out of turn 13. Ramos fends him off. Marvin Kirchhofer for the McLaren, Johnny Adam for the Mercedes as the next drivers. And off the road goes 22, that's the Carl Cavers BMW. And I can't see that getting out of there. So Carl Cavers is off the road. And that's in the mid part of the lap. So Carl Cavers in the gravel. And if it can't get out, that could well be our first safety car trigger of the race. Let's see, over the line go the race leaders there. Ramos to Cottingham, three tenths of a second. In third place is Ian Loggy. Now, if we are going to go safety car, if, 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 that may well trigger a few cars to dive into the pit lane. This is where the really savvy race engineers are going to be looking at everything around them and trying to work out whether it's worth a punt to get one of those mandatory stops out of the way and what that does to the maximum driver time that you are allowed to use your two drivers for. An hour and 40 minutes is the maximum a driver can do. You want all of that used for the pro and it's there at turn five. Carl Cavers has just gone straight on by the look of it. You can see the witness marks on the road. And whether he locked up or whether there was a failure, he will know. But the net result is the car is in the gravel and it ain't going to drive out of there, I would have thought. So if that can get there, there's always the fear that another car could. There in the meantime is Sean Balfe, still holding on to position. And as the leaders come through to complete now, five laps the car in second spot james cottingham planning another attack for that race lead as the cars now swing down through uh, turn one two three that tightening sequence of corners at the start of the lap safety car deployed so the safety car on track so the flags and boards will be indicated around the circuit and the drivers hold station so that comes on lap six 
Safety car for number 22 BMW of Carl Cabers. There it is. He's tried to dig it out as we were looking uh, at the efforts earlier on, but it's just not going to happen for him. So Carl Cabers stuck in the gravel, and uh, that takes that car out of the race. And indeed, there are early pit stops. Garage 59 and 2Cs both go for the pit lane with the lead car and then second and third Mercedes. So that's going to put Sean Balfe into the lead. Interesting, because quite often it's Barwell that rolled the dice on strategy, but they've kept Sean out, at least for another lap. So uh, in comes the brace of 2Cs Mercedes. I'm trying to see whether they're going to do a driver change, but I don't think they will. It's a bit early to do that. Also in, ah, oh, interesting, one of the Barwell Lambos in. Uh, so is Darren Lung, and Dan Harper is going to take over number 91. Look, so he's quickly on his toes. So one of the three mandatory stops ticked off here for a good number of the teams. So in has come Ramos, Cottingham, Loggy, uh, Darren Leung is in as well. So is Andrew Howard. And you can see number 93 of Chris Froggett. He gives way to, uh, sorry, Kevin Say to give way to Chris Froggett. And when the car is unoccupied, that means that there's fuel going in. Jake, uh, the, uh, what else have we got? John Ferguson, yes, number 15, he is in, in the... Ram Racing Mercedes, 72 Barwell Lamborghini, Mark Sanson's car in, uh, Tim Kresic, Andre Borodin, and also the GT4 leader, interestingly, Josh Miller has come in. Not many of the GT4 brigade have. So Dan Vaughan in the McLaren now takes over the GT4 lead. So there's going to be a lot of shuffling uh, when the cars come back on track. And this will be a couple of laps at least, I would have thought, to get this car out of harm's way. The earlier Caterham race had a very slow recovery operation. This is a lot, lot faster though, which is good to see. And so the car quickly hooked out of the gravel. That's Chris Froggart then now on board number 93. And with James Cottingham having done the fastest lap of the race, the car, as Johnny Adam was saying to me on the grid, has this uh, long pit stop to do because of its result at Snatterton, but not until the last pit stop, an extra 15 seconds on the final stop. So right now, cars behind the safety car work their way up through turn 14. This is the Sagresh corner. And 22 sets off again, but how many laps will that have cost? Two laps, that's cost Carl Cavers. Damage on the front, so he clearly got through the gravel very effectively to reach the tyre barrier. Does, again, make me wonder whether it was uh, an issue that caused him to go off rather than driver error. Carl is a very accomplished amp. He's not been racing for that many seasons as the mass exodus of early pit stoppers now comes back onto the circuit. Uh, Carl Cave has started only in 2020, but has done a lot of racing in Porsches and in Ferraris uh, and the Brit Car British Endurance Championship since then. Right, bit of shuffling possibly on the stops, but away they go. And in comes Sean Balfe. So Barwell splitting them uh, a lap apart. So that's now going to put Mark Radcliffe into the lead of the race. Replay of the start. You see what a good getaway it was from Miguel Ramos. He took the advantage. And uh, Ian Logging trying to get the move on the inside line against James Cottingham. Couldn't quite do that. James Cottingham holding his line on the outside, then swooping across to the apex. GT4 further back. Josh Miller converting pole position into the class lead as they got to turn two. Bit of hip and shoulder, John Ferguson on Mark Sansom. Through he went. That's where the damage was picked up, clearly. So that was uh, noted by race control, and it looks as though the road is pretty much clear. Oh, and that was the impact that Carl Cavers suffered at the back of the McLaren. So, yes, it wasn't so much a failure as uh, an accident getting into the back of, was that number 90 McLaren, the Jack Brown car that he hit, and was therefore launched into the gravel. So more and more pit stops coming, and Mark Radcliffe in number 27 will take over the lead. It's a McLaren 1-2, but now the second place McLaren is a GT4 car, Dan Vaughan. Team Parker Racing, synonymous with Porsches, very successfully so, having had a rather troubled season, oddly, with a Cayman. So trying something different for this round. They've uh, borrowed this car from Eddie Ives' Elite Motorsport squad. It has come straight from Misano, where it was in the GT4 races last week. And uh, so far, so good. The car qualified third on the aggregated times in GT4. And look at this, quite a few of the GT4 cars moving ahead of GT3 traffic on those pit stops. So there's going to be a little bit of uh, battling for Miguel Ramos and James Cotting to get through some of those uh, GT4 cars. And why the overtaking is going on, discuss because you're not meant to be overtaking that was Darren Lund, Dan Harper's BMW going around the outside arguably because they were still in the pit lane they were the other side of the white line but no overtaking permitted behind the safety car so when you've got cars rejoining like that it 
it uh, takes a little bit of unravelling and commitment from the drivers involved to know exactly which position is theirs. So Dan Harper goes through turn five. And as I say, Mark Radcliffe, number 27 McLaren, will lead the way. So that's the car behind the safety car that is the leader. He has stayed out. And we'll see at the end of the lap where Miguel Ramos drops to. The order is the same, uh, as you can see, out of the GT3 leaders. So there, with the safety car due in, I think, this time. No, lights, I think, are still flashing. But nope, gone out now. We haven't had the safety car in. Uh, legend on the timing screen, but it looks as though it is heading for the pit lane, and Mark Radcliffe then slows the pace, ready to accelerate away. You can't overtake until you get to the timing line, but uh, you can control the restart, and Mark Radcliffe has done just that. He's got a chance now to try to break away while the GT3 opposition has to work its way through traffic. 76 Mercedes going through uh, behind. That car, Tim Cressick, started. Consul Lapalainen at the wheel, but that's got a lap down. So there, look, the Dayglow orange Mercedes, number 76, has got to get past the McLaren to put itself back on the lead lap, bearing in mind it owes as a pit stop. Here, behind quite a bit of GT4 traffic, Ramos has now given way to Kirkhofer. Behind him, it's Johnny Adam. Behind him, Phil Keane. And then Dan Harper. And Harper is absolutely on his toes on the restart. Goes to the outside of Phil Keane. Johnny Adam up the inside of the traffic, side by side there. Dan Harper still able to swat away the challenge of Phil Keane in the Mercedes as they get up towards turn two. But they've still fallen back behind GT4 traffic and there is work to do then because while they're mired like this, having to get past slower cars, Mark Radcliffe, admittedly an hour, but these are pros, he is trying to build that lead. So he is first at the moment, the next GT3 car, uh, eighth Marvin Kirchhoff, others getting through the traffic, number 11 McLaren there. They've got Martin Plowman at the wheel coming up to have a go at Chris Froggart. You've got Marcus Klassen ahead of them and Martin Plowman, another criminally underrated driver, gets up the inside of Froggart. Now the outside line at turn four gets run out wide a little bit, but he is ahead. So Martin Plowman goes through, gains a spot. Next target is going to be Matt Topham. There, number 72, which is now Will Tregertha. He gets past Chris Froggart as well. Tregertha taking over from Mark Sansom. So lots of early stoppers to put in, certainly GT3, uh, to put the pro in quickly. And so now, is that going to be a long stint or a short stint? Again, you need late race, the pro in the car. If there's a late race safety car, that's where you can win or lose the race. So all the teams will factor in the need for the faster driver to be in the car for a long end stint, I should have thought. So there, number 72, Will Tregertha getting himself a little bit nearer now to the back of the McLaren, number 11. Martin Plowman at the wheel of it. So 27 leads the way from this gaggle of cars. So Mark Radcliffe leads, then it is Will Moore's Mustang, Dan Vaughan's McLaren, uh, more GT4 traffic, and then here, look, Marvin Kirchhofer is second of the GT3 cars, and Dan Harper to the inside gets ahead of Johnny Adam there, diving down to turn one. Remember, these are the best of those that have made their first regulation pit stop. So, in real terms, this is the lead battle, uh, but the notional leader, at the moment at least, is Mark Radcliffe, because he's yet to stop, and so that GT4 traffic behind. So, uh, Kirchhofer, fastest man up the hill at Goodwood a week ago, leads. There is Raffaele Marcello in now for John Ferguson, number 15. And you can see how much faster a GT3 car is than a GT4. Mercedes to the outside of the McLaren. Job done, goes swooping round the outside of uh, the number seven McLaren. That's also made a pit stop, so it's now put Tom Rawlings into the car. So the GT4 fight, just as intense and the non-stopping as yet. Uh, Will Moore Mustang from Academy Motorsport leads the way. Martin Plowman gets up the inside of the one Motorsport Mercedes. Michael Broadhurst has taken that over. Look back from the Lamborghini. So this is Will Tregertha, hard at work. Janessa Junior graduate turned GT4 star and a very accomplished GT3 peddler when the opportunities present. So he's getting himself up through the battle pack. We've had the first 20 minutes of the race that have absolutely flown by. Uh, number 22 BMW, by the way, that was in the gravel, is now in the pits. So as good as out of the race, sad to say. BMW goes through. Now, Dan Harper has chipped his way, hasn't he, already up past the two Mercedes and now is right onto the back of Marvin Kirchhofer. Fastest lap of the race, Sandy Mitchell, number 78 Lamborghini, behind this battle pack as Kirchhofer gets up through the traffic. Dan Harper goes with him and gets right through the traffic, absolutely side by side for the lead. 
and they get past the GT4 battle as well. And Dan Harper takes over effectively the race lead. Then the best of those that have made a pit stop is number 91 BMW. So it's Harper up front over Marvin Kirchhofer. And the BMW, really strong car on this kind of a circuit, illustrating exactly why everybody feared it pre-race. Picked off the McLaren, it's picked off the Mercedes, and now Dan Harper tries to get away. That is Phil Keane going through, having taken over from Ian Loggy. So normal service being resumed, if you like. The GT3 cars moving ahead of GT4 uh, traffic and all of those GT4 cars in that exalted position because they've not yet made uh, one of those three regulation pit stops. This car has made the first of the three. Dan Harper then leading the way, trying to break clear now from the Marvin Kirchhoff and McLaren in second spot as they come over the brow. So the climb uphill. This is number 27, which is Mark Radcliffe's McLaren. Ignore the cars behind, because they're a lap down already, uh, having made pit stops. So you've got 76, Consolapalinum, and then 24, McLaren, but they're a lap down. So Mark Radcliffe is the man who is leading the way and comes up towards the end of the lap. As I keep saying, yet to make a pit stop. So Mark Radcliffe doing a long first stint, unlike the Ams who bailed to put the pro in. And Mark Radcliffe's pace is a 1.44.9 last time, whereas the pros, well, they're in traffic, so it's harder to gauge. They're comparable, although Ewan Hankey has done a 42.8 further back. So uh, Mark Radcliffe is doing a, a good job for an AM, but now that there's clear road ahead of Dan Harper, let's have a look at exactly what the pace is going to be. 1.43.7, so the gap is coming down, and it's 15 seconds. So Harper, Kirchhofer, then Adam, then Keane. This is the GT4 notional lead, but remember, these haven't stopped yet, so they're not really the leaders, but they're leading on the road, and it's more ahead of Evans, ahead of Dan Vaughan. Then Nicky Team goes thundering through in the Aston Martin, and the best of the GT4 cars that have made a pit stop is the number 23, Aston Martin, Seb Hopkins, now at the wheel of it. There it is. So at the moment, it's running seventh in GT4 silver, but it's the overall GT4 leader based on the fact that it's made a pit stop. I know it's all very confusing uh, with cars in the position that they're not really in because they'll give it up again, uh, but that Aston is the best placed GT4 pit stopper. In other words, retains its lead because once the cars we were looking at a moment ago pit, they'll fall back behind it. However, what they have to do now before they pit is try and lap quicker than this car so they don't drop too far behind it on their first regulation stop. Bear in mind as well that that Aston Martin is a silver and within that uh, fight that's going on up front in GT4, more silvers, which have to make an extra 14 seconds anyway. So the GT4 Pro-Am car that leads the way at the moment is 86, that is now the Ginetta had a driver change to put into it, James Townsend. That's in the pound seats because that's gained 14 seconds over the silvers. Down through the gears goes Eric Evans, Matt Cowley's car. This, remember, has yet to stop. So Eric Evans at the wheel and the sister car right up the road ahead. Uh, they gambled at Alton Park on a pit lane start with a last gasp tyre choice and came through to win. Is this the correct strategy, staying out? Not many of the teams would seem to agree. The majority have pitted, but Mark Radcliffe doing a long first in the lead. That's Raffaele Marcello coming around the outside. So the GT3 Mercedes, again, that illustrates just how much quicker those cars are, just storms through. Over the timing line goes the Mustang. That pit straight seems very, very, very long in a GT4 car compared to a GT3 car that gobbles it up a bit quicker. So on the 13th lap of the race, the race leaders. And I mentioned a little while ago, Consta Lapalainen having gone a lap down, taking over from Tim Cresswick. It's the same Consta Lapalainen we see doing great things for Emil Frey Racing in Fanatec GT in Europe. Uh, new to the Mercedes, new to this championship, but uh, pushing on. It's another car that's gone a lap down, number 24, Ollie Webb. Now, this is significant because if Ollie Webb can get himself ahead of Mark Radcliffe, he's back on the lead lap. Uh, Ollie much quicker than Andre Borodin, who started the car and up the inside he goes, job done. Ollie Webb then goes through in that Greystone GT McLaren that's had a lot of fire damage uh, after free practice and then a, a change of gearbox as well. So lots of work has gone on on that car. But it's good to have it on the grid and Ollie Webb illustrating how quick a driver he is. This though is the real race leader, if you like, Dan Harper, who not only is the best of those that have stopped, but he's catching Mark Radcliffe anyway. 
So uh, the number 91 BMW hustles on. The gap last time was 13 seconds and change back as 72 Lamborghini gets up the inside of the Mustang there. So Will Tregertha goes through and puts the move then on Will Moore. So still blasting forward. The Mustangs, of course, starting to fall back as the GT3 machinery uses its greater speed to get up the pecking order. Number 61, Eric Evans, another driver new to Portimao. A few people have tested here or done the odd uh, Cremantic 24-hour series style race, but for many of them, it's all new. There is Tregertha. So he comes up towards the line, and the Progress Bay puts him into the top 10 now behind Martin Plowman. Fastest lap of the race, Raffaele Marcello. So a 1.42.6. In other words, Raffaele is catching not only Radcliffe as an AM, but also Dan Harper. So number 15, Mercedes, which will have to serve a further 20 seconds on its last pit stop under the regulations, is hustling on and getting up the order right now. That's number 18, McLaren. Dan Vaughan still at the wheel of it. It's fallen back into 14th place now as the GT3 cars have asserted themselves, but that car's still going very strongly indeed. And the lead gap, 10 seconds now, incidentally, between Radcliffe and Harper. 27 goes by, Mark Radcliffe. There's Consolapa Linen behind in the uh, bright orange Mercedes, trying to put himself back on the lead lap. He's almost there. Remember, he specialises in Ferraris, the 296 that he drives for Emil Frey Racing. And uh, something new for him this weekend. Dan Harper then, as anticipated, is closing 10 seconds last time. He was 8 tenths quicker in sector one. He was 9 tenths quicker in sector two. So, again, the gap coming down, coming down, coming down. Interesting, though, the way that the uh, Optimum Motorsport team are treating this, leaving Mark Radcliffe out for that long stint. Of course, that should balance in a sense, because you'll put Rob Bell in overlapping with some of the AMs when these pros give way on the next pit stop. So, it will all be intriguing to see how it uh, unravels at the end of the three hours, see who got it right, who got it wrong in terms of that early stop. Optimum run by Baz Linders certainly will have a trick up its sleeve as their number one Macla uh, Mercedes, I should say, goes through. Phil Keane, that's the best of the pit stoppers, the in effect race leader, Dan Harper, goes through. And the gap that he's got to Marvin Kirchhoff for two seconds. Then you've got Johnny Adam in third spot. Behind Johnny Adam is Keane, behind Keane is Nicky Team, then Raffaele Marcello, then it's Clatton, Plowman, Tregertha, Froggart, and Sandy Mitchell is the one still quite a long way back. Now remember that number 78 Lamborghini pitted a lap after these cars, and that seems to have been the wrong call, doesn't it? It's lost track position to most of the GT3 grid. 72, for example, jumped ahead of it, the sister car, but it's given Sandy Mitchell quite a bit of work to do in this part of the race now, as he tries to get himself up into contention. So there, the BMW comes over the brow. Dan Harper, BMW factory driver. He's the one in a way that uh, Porsche let go wrongly because he was Carrera Cup GB champion, but instead of picking him up, putting him into a program, it was BMW that snapped him up as a junior program driver. And after that program was done, a fully fledged factory BMW driver is Dan Harper, the Northern Irishman. And here, Darren Lung have made a really good combination this year, Silverstone winners. And there is Phil Keane, the man with most British GT race wins to his name. There's the man with most titles to his name, Johnny Adam going through, and Phil Keane clips the curb at turn 15. That just unsettles the car a little bit. So the race leader goes through. Dan Harper ahead of Marvin Kirkhofer, ahead of Johnny Adam, ahead of Phil Keane, and they are now just under six seconds back from Mark Radcliffe. So another couple of laps, and that's going to be a uh, on-the-road lead change. So you'll get these cars in the top four anyway, irrespective of the fact that the leading car on the road still has to make its first of those three mandatory pit stops. So there, up the hill, turns Phil Keane, teammate to Johnny Adam. Those Mercedes are second apart, both out of the 2 seas motorsport stable, the anglo Bahraini team, down into turn five. Now goes number one. So Phil Keane, not quite close enough to think about a move, but with still two and a half hours to go. Doesn't have to do it just yet. Uh, GT4 still being led by the car of Will Moore ahead of Eric Evans. And then third in GT4 is the McLaren of Dan Vaughan. But again, they have yet to make pit stops. So Dan Harper, sector one, half a second quicker. Sector two, eight tenths quicker. It's going to be round about the three and a half mark, possibly, when he comes over the line between him and the leading car of Mark Radcliffe. Constant Appalinen, interestingly, in the uh, 76 
Mercedes still unable to get close enough to Radcliffe to unlap himself. And Lapalainen is the pro, and Mark Radcliffe is regarded as the am in those two different cars. So a bit of a frustration, a bit of a uh, concern, I would have thought, for the 76 Mercedes team. And Dan Harper under investigation for safety car procedure. Under investigation for safety car procedure. Now, whether that's for the cars coming out of the pit lane and being overtaken, whether it's for something else, we will find out. But number 91 is under investigation. The race leader, there he is, Dan Harper. It's being looked at by race control. Puts a lap on number 90 McLaren, which is the Jack Brown Charles Clark car. That's a long way back now after its slow first stop and also a bit of damage. I think picked up with the Carl Cavers incident. It's effectively in last place now. Dan Harper comes over the brow. Consul Apollinen is ahead, getting himself up through the traffic there, moving past the Ginetta. Gets up past James Townsend's car. And here comes Harper round the outside, out of turn six. Drops it down again into turn eight now. And that, number seven, McLaren in trouble, is the car of Tom Rawlings that's on the inside, on the cut through at Turn 5. That's the one that's had all sorts of gearbox woes over the weekend, and that looks like its race is run. So number seven, McLaren, sadly, out of the race. Been a really torrid weekend for them, and that car going no further, it seems, as here, Matt Cowley's Mustang, Eric Evans at the wheel, hustles on behind Will Moore. Oh, dear, flame now. So it gets worse and worse for number seven, McLaren. This could be another neutralisation if that needs attending to, because Marshall's aren't going to be... Uh, easily able to get to that, I don't think. Now, this Mustang battle, and we go safety car again, safety car again. Uh, that Mustang battle is coming on strong, so second safety car after 10 laps from the first one. That's not 10 racing laps, that's 10 laps since it was deployed. So lap number 16, safety car two. Now, this brings again two Cs into the pit lane, get those stops done. So that's going to put Cottingham and Loggy back on board. Interesting strategy that they're employing. Dan Har and Mark Radcliffe is in this time as well. So Mark Radcliffe making his first pit stop to put Rob Bell in the car. And uh, out gets Johnny Adam. Well, that was brief, he thinks. And uh, Phil Keane, likewise. So these pit stops, 145 seconds. And uh, Ian Loggy thinking I'm batting. Time to take the helmet off. Going to get back on board. So the two C's team rolling the dice and others that have come in will be Nicky Team to give back to Andrew Howard and Martin Plowman to give back to Mark Smith but not many of the GT3 field electing to do it this time yet at least uh, so uh, new set of boots goes on to James Cottingham's Mercedes Ian Loggy is on board number one and there the Mustangs come in, that's their first pit stop. So these were the cars leading the GT4 battle, but uh, now coming in for the pit stop. So there, Callum Bowes more than ready. Now this is what we saw at the time, and I was questioning whether Dan Harper should have been passing the traffic. Look, he swoops into the corner, gets past one, gets past two, gets past three that have just rejoined from the pits, and that's under safety car conditions. That's what's being looked at by race control, but not quite sure what the defence is there. I know they just rejoined, but one may be because of uh, overlapping one side of the white line, but the other two, uh, less easy to argue, I would have thought. So uh, there, the Mercedes get away, and also number 24 has been in. Ollie Webb to presumably give way again to Andre Borodin to try and get his stints out of the way while we are behind the safety car like this. So safety car on track, and in now comes Marvin Kirchhofer, in also comes Dan Harper, but a lap after the Mercedes. So down the pit road, Andrew Howard. So more and more coming into the pit lane, but a lap later, 
which might be significant for good or for bad. So Harper in, Kirkhoff are in, Froggart in, Sandy Mitchell in. Two hours and 24 minutes still on the clock. So there, Garage 59. McLaren's, and also I think I'm right in saying Dan Vaughan just ahead of the Parker Elite uh, McLaren, the GT4 car, the Artura. So Dan Parker giving way again to Darren Bung. That is Kevin Say getting on board from Froggart. And it's the cars queue out behind the safety car. The number 15 Mercedes has now taken over effectively the race lead because that was second behind Dan Harper and Harper is in. So the safety car doesn't have the overall leader behind it because the overall leader has pitted. But what we now have is Raffaele Marchiello uh, into the lead of the race. And then, unless he pits this time, I think he might do, yes, uh, in he comes. So the uh, number 15 Mercedes, two laps after some of the GT3 opposition comes in. And that will give the car back to John Ferguson. In a sense, if there's going to be a, a safety car period, you want the slower driver in because you're not squandering the pace of your pro. Those cars queuing up at the end of the pit lane have to wait until the queue has gone by before the pit lane uh, light goes to green. And in there is Kirkhofer. Number four, Mercedes, I think, is there as well in that queue, ready to be released, and also number one. So they have to queue, they have to wait, and now the light goes green, so the cars are being allowed out. Interesting that that was a queue of cars being held, whereas earlier, uh, cars were being allowed out. Actually, it's only the McLaren and the BMW, not the Mercedes. The Mercedes have got out, but because uh, they were a lap earlier, of course. So you've got 91 and 88 as the two casualties of that red light. So that's gone against uh, Miguel Ramos and Darren Lung, who've now taken over those cars. As you look at number 15, McLaren, which is now going to have John Ferguson back on board. So the race leader now becomes number 77, Marcus Clutton. That's only made one stop. New tyres going on number 12, Mercedes. And that is the Michael Broadhurst Ed McDermott car. So that's the leader, that's 77. Marcus Klassen having taken over from Matt Topham. Wiltshire Gertha second. That car's only made. Uh, one pit stop as well. In third place, potentially number 13, Ewan Hankey having taken over from Lucky Carer. Now the next question is whether or not the race director wants to restart with the leader behind the safety car, or is content that when the safety car was deployed, it did pick up the leader, the leader has since pitted, uh, because if uh, he wants that car behind, it'll take a little bit longer just to let the traffic go and let them have a sporting chance of catching up. So Marcus Clatton goes through, and that car looking rapid. That's a rather sorry sight, isn't it? The uh, McLaren being cradled away. I think it's had to have some extinguishment on the back of it. And uh, after so much effort by Paddock Motorsport, Martin Plowman's team, the GT3 car going strongly, but the GT4 one, I'm afraid, as you can see, is not a happy sight. Right, more shuffling as in comes Clatton and in comes Tregertha out of the top two places, they come down the pit road. As they come in, others serve the pit stop and rejoin, including Ed McDermott back at the wheel of number 12. And there is James Cottingham back at the wheel of number four. So a stint, a very short break, and into another stint as he climbs the hill. So the team's having to be 
very reactive here with these early safety car periods. Johnny Adam was suggesting there might be a few. Uh, and uh, that car heading uphill. The number four Mercedes. So there, Rafael Marcello has, according to the timing screen, stayed behind the wheel. Now, I would have thought John Ferguson is behind because the regulations are that you have to do a driver change on each regulation pit stop. So I think it's just that the driver ID is in the wrong place. That'll update next time it uh, trips a beam, I hope. So John Ferguson at the wheel of 15. Number 13 there. Uh, Ewan Hankey has just brought that in to give back to Lucky Carer, who wasn't here yesterday nor Friday. So all of his mileage has been done in warm-up and uh, in the race thus far. 42 behind the sister car, uh, James Kell, Ian Campbell's entry. So number 15, Mercedes, we've seen on its outlap there, heading for the paddock, and retirement is the paddock motorsport McLaren. There's number 13 coming through, and uh, there, number four. So this Mercedes is going to gain another heap of places on this next lap over the line. So under safety car conditions, and now that the road is clear, we can start to uh, get ready for the restart and also nudge towards the end of the first hour, which has had plenty of drama in it. So as the cars come through, number 76, Consul Apollinen, who has only in this car had one pit stop, should this time complete 20 laps, coasting up towards the line under these safety car conditions. And that should now, I think, put him into the lead because all the cars that were ahead of him and had done 20 laps have since pitted. So, lap and from Cottingham, I would offer you, as the order. And then in third place is going to be number one of Ian Loggy. And then Rob Bell for fourth, potentially, as they come over the line. So, the cars come through. Matt Topham has rejoined in 77. And actually, number 50 is the leading car, uh, because in this queue, is the uh, Mercedes, James Wallace, at the wheel of it. And the drive tap car has made only one stop and is therefore now, with 21 laps done, in the lead. So I'd rather miss that in the queue. But uh, number 50, then, is the leader. So we're looking for anybody else to do 21 laps. So at the moment, there is nobody because they're all completing 20 laps these cars as they come over the line so we can't be too far off getting things back on the way so that's the on the road leader it's done 21 laps to the 20 of everybody else and then potentially the cars that have just been released from the pits Matt Topham uh, Mark Sanson Lucky Carer have got ahead of the queue here. So I reckon there's another wave somewhere uh, in the third sector coming up towards the line like these. So Lucky Care, number 13, is ahead of Matt Topham. That's changed on the pit stops because that was the leading car uh, when it came in, if you remember, the Aston Martin. So that's a, a trade of place in the pits. And 72 has got past as well and jumped both of them. So 72 uh, potentially is up into second place now, just ahead of these two coming into shot. So the uh, Lamborghini from Barwell, and you'd always put some money on Barwell where strategy is concerned, looking quite strong at the moment. So uh, as the field comes through, now where is John Ferguson in all of this? He is going to be through ahead of number 72 Lambo. Yes, so John Ferguson for second place, possibly, at the end of this lap. Let's have a look. So we're looking now for more cars to complete 21 laps, just to confirm an order. And so to the timing line they come. 
So number 50 Mercedes is at the moment the on the road leader, but there's only done one pit stop of the regulation three. That's fine, it can address that as the race goes on. John Ferguson is second and the best of the two stoppers. So number 15 Mercedes is second, 72 Lamborghini is third. Fourth is number 13 Lucky Carer, fifth is 77 Matt Topham, and they are all two stoppers. So the ones that have uh, lost out are Cottingham and Loggy, and even more so, uh, Miguel Ramos and Darren Lung, because they have fallen way, way back in the queue relative to these cars. So that's John Ferguson's car. Snetterton winner. And for that win, you carry the compensation time on your last pit stop. And because this is a longer race, it's a longer compensation. Uh, that is Consul Apollinen coming into the pit lane. So that car is finally on the lead lap, but he's about to drop off it uh, as more pit stops are uh, going to be served, one of them being for that car. John Ferguson out of turn five. Now, James Wallace, still the race leader, phony race leader, you could argue, because the car's only done one pit stop to the two of John Ferguson. But James, who has come from junior saloons up to uh, GT Cup in GT4 machinery last year, uh, getting on with the programme of learning about a GT3 machine and doing it well, but with his relative lack of experience, he wouldn't necessarily anticipate the lap times to be as good as some of those around him. So there is the potential that he will drop back when we go green once more. Plus the fact, as we keep saying, that car is due a pit stop. That's the lap alignment to Tim Cressick. Mercedes, used tyres going on, as you can see. And depending on where that car is released relative to traffic, might fall off the lap again. So lap alignment done for the moment. Interesting, I suppose, for him to learn about what a Mercedes is like and take some of that knowledge to Emil Frey and the Ferrari 296 squad when he's back in World Challenge Europe, which is going to be at the Nürburgring next weekend. But the uh, 76 Mercedes finishing its pit stop as here the uh, next wave of cars continues on its way with the Ginetta at the head of the queue Joe Wheeler at the wheel of it the son of the late Peter Wheeler the TVR chairman for many many years and owner bit of concern from one or two of the teams that the Ginetta here going so slowly bottling up the cars behind is, is getting them uh, rather hot all the cars being told they must maintain 80 kilometers an hour but uh, the Ginetta a little bit slow for two C's liking them they're a bit fearful that the cars are overheating or might be overheating so it's another element of long safety car periods so the Road should be clear fairly soon, I would have thought, so we can get things back underway. Safety car made a, a long appearance in the two-hour Donington race, for example, but uh, here the field coming up now towards turn 14 through Sargresh, that corner, and then the run towards the end of another lap. So still staying out, not serving a second stop, is number 50, James Wallace, still the race leader. Drivers trying to keep warmth in the tyres, and you can see one or two lagging back just so they can then uh, get a bit of cool air in the front of the car. That is the Stuart Middleton Ginetta. Now that's seventh and is currently the leader in GT4, but has only done one pit stop. So uh, again, it's a, a notional lead, but for the moment, leads nonetheless. Uh, through goes James Cottingham, through goes Ian Loggy behind. But all the cars 
being told to maintain 80 kilometers an hour in this safety car period. And that is what they are doing. There you can see James Cottingham with right on his tail, Ian Loggy, and then Rob Bell, and then Andrew Howard. So Rob Bell, a pro in amongst AMS, quick AMS, admittedly, but AMS. So uh, you can anticipate maybe that McLaren to be able to gain some ground on that timing tower. You can see how many pit stops people have made, and hence that jumbled order with Sam having done two of the three. Uh, others only having done one. So the GT4 cars with the black background to the numbers on that timing tower. The leader, which owes a pit stop, seventh, and then go all the way down to 18th. Another one that's only done one stop. So the real GT3 leader is number 23, double stopper, the Aston, which has got Josh Miller back behind the wheel. they turn for the 24th time in the context of the leader and he remains effectively a, a, a lap up on most cars uh, there is number 50 that's the on the road leader at the moment so They've got a problem. James Wallace slowed at the top of the hill, but is very, very slow. Now, this might be that he is under instruction to drop back so the safety car can catch and therefore go ahead of the race leader uh, in order to restart the race. But I was a bit fearful for a moment that that car might have had a problem. So slow did it seem to be going coming up uh, from turn seven. there very very slowly now in the field heading up the hill and Peter Daly the race director with the local officials trying to coordinate all of this so that the race is back underway as soon as now that any incidents are cleared any dramas that we're not aware of like any liquid on the road might need to be attended to and then you need to get recovery vehicles back to position should they be required again. So there's a little bit more than just scooping a car out of the way. The fastest lap of the race so far to number 15, Raffaele Marciello at the wheel rather than John Ferguson. These are the drivers in the cars now, but it's the co-drivers that did the time. So John Ferguson uh, with Raffaele Marciello, Andrew Howard's car, but by Nicky Team, Darren Lung, Dan Harper, Lucky Carers, McLaren, Ewan Hankey did the time, and Sean Balfe's car, Sandy Mitchell did the time. So out of turn 14 they come. That's the car in second place, John Ferguson. And there is the safety car, which is now ready to scoop up the field for the restart. And in comes number 50. So more drama for the race control team, just when they thought they got this all worked out. Uh, so the leader pit. So where is John Ferguson out of all of this? If the race director wants the leading car behind, he doesn't have to have it. Uh, the lead car was behind the safety car, but you don't need the leader behind for a restart necessarily. But if he wants that, that's going to delay things a little bit more. Otherwise, let them go. But this car currently would be the better part of a lap up on, say, number 91 BMW, because that's stuck behind the safety car. Now, safety car sometimes works in your favor, sometimes doesn't. Let's wait and see how all this is going to be managed, ready for the restart of the race.
So there is James Wallace, now Chris Hart. Mercedes, which was a car that triggered a red flag, in fact, in free practice yesterday, but has gone well thus far. And so, with the pit stop done, that will bring that back into uh, the same format, if you like, the same pattern as everybody else with two stops. That's the safety car then coming up out of turn eight. The car behind is 23rd, Andre Borodin. The car behind that is 88 now. Back to Miguel Ramos, that, and that is 13th. So they would both dearly like to be released here so they can catch up to the leader, which will be 15, John Ferguson. Up through turn 13, they come. But Miguel Ramos and Darren Lung behind, 13th and 14th, they are, as you can see, a long, long way back from the John Ferguson-driven Mercedes that's the race-leading car right now. And now the safety car crew let them by. So they'll pick up the leader for the restart, and the leader will be number 15. And let us hope that the safety car able to dart across and scoop up the Mercedes so this at least brings those cars back onto the lead battle and there is John Ferguson at the back of the picture he should not overtake the safety car the safety car crew will be aware of what they're looking for and so we now have a race leader Mark Sanson in the Lamborghini is second Lucky Carer McLaren third Matt Topham Aston fourth and Ian Campbell, McLaren fifth. That's the leading quintet then. Whew, right, we've got there. Uh, we've got the order. We've got the cars being released and hurtling around to try and catch the queue. And this, would you believe, is going to get us pretty much to the end of the first hour, which might trigger some more pit stops and a bit more shuffling of the order. So the safety car heads up the hill. And now I think the race control team will wait for as long as they can for the traffic to catch up, which, of course, on a three-mile circuit isn't going to be the work of a moment. But uh, there are some demon laps being put in now by the likes of James Cottingham and Ian Loggie and Rob Bell to try to get up with the pack ahead. We need Miguel Ramos, Darren Lung, Kevin Say, Sean Balf also, another driver uh, rather compromised. But uh, they're getting there, they're catching. There is the reigning champion, Ian Loggy, and behind him is Andrew Howard. Between the two, Rob Bell, but the uh, two hands, champions both, Andrew twice, Ian once, and James Cottingham there, very vigorous with the Mercedes, the yellow and green one, flicking it left and right to try and get warmth into the tyres. James has got a great pedigree in historic racing, and when he came into British GT, a couple of seasons back was instantly uh, on the pace, did a, a part season, uh, and then this is second full year, but looks the real deal. Was one of the drivers that took part in the Spa 24 hours for the first time. Not that he doesn't know Spa, because he's done the six hour historic race many, many times, but uh, for the 24 hours this time. Now, there's another wave of cars being led by number 50, which has just crawled over the line incredibly slowly, and that's not helping the next wave. So there, uh, that is Chris Hart in the Mercedes, uh, number 50, the drive tack car, that needs to hurry up because that's compromising everybody behind. So that car needs to catch the queue, not run at 80 kilometers, speed up and catch up, and he's not doing so. Out of turn two comes Andre Borodin, but you can anticipate Garage 59 and Century Motorsport are gonna be on the uh, radio to other teams saying, come on, hurry up. There's a radio issue, I gather, to number 50, so the team 
saying to number 50 Mercedes, saying to the driver, you've got to speed up, uh, but he's not aware. So uh, that's Rob Bell pitting. Comes down the pit road. So that's going to put Mark Radcliffe back into it. And so Ferguson, Sanson, Kerr, Topham, Campbell, Stuart Middleton, who still only done one stop in the Ginetta there, just coming into the picture. Rob Bell giving way to Mark Radcliffe, new boots, Goldie Optimum, McLaren as well. So new tyres, new Pirellis. And as the cars come down towards turn five, Where is in all of this number 50? Because there's still this incredible gap between the cars there. So you can see it's still about half a lap. Ah, oh, finally, I think Chris Hart's got the message and has speeded up. Andre Borodin needs to do likewise, but all of this is now Borodin's the slow one. Uh, all of this is just elongating the safety car period. So Chris Hart's stormed away. And Andre Borodin now, because he's going at a slower pace, not catching, uh, means that the cars behind him are stuck. Safety car stays out. They're trying to, as best they can, give the stragglers a chance to catch up. But when the stragglers are slow, it takes a long time to catch up. Short of parking these and then letting them catch up and restart, which you can't really do, uh, it's going to have to be your, your best case scenario, give them a, a sporting chance. Borodin will get overtaken as soon as the cars cross the timing line under a green flag, but they need to try and chivy him along somehow to get onto the back of the queue. And hopefully Greystone is, is doing that on the radio. Miguel Ramos, Darren Lung behind. They're the two that are going to lose out here because of that slow McLaren uh, lagging back from the safety car. So initially it was Chris Hart. He has now speeded up, but behind. And just to compound all of this, the McLarens are lapped down anyway. So it's not even battling for position. So there are the leaders. That's Mark Radcliffe back into the race, the car that led uh, an element of the early part. So you can imagine the frustration in race control, you can imagine the frustration in certain pit boxes as well as the race continues behind the safety car. Chris Hart in number 50 McLaren has just gone past the pit, so he's nearly with the back of the queue. But in turn, Andre Borodin is only just coming over the line. So Hart to Borodin is a big gap anyway. They're on different laps, he's not really measuring fairly. But uh, he is lapping quickly, but not yet catching up to the queue. Chris Hart has done so. Might, might, might be there by the end of the lap looking at this, but uh, Andre Borodin down in 23rd place has uh, taken his time to get up with the back of the queue, the uh, very accomplished polo player. And so race control are stretching the safety car period to give that second wave the chance to catch up, to make it fair, which is understandable. And. Uh, Hopefully, on this lap, Andre Borodin and friends would have been able to catch up. Uh, the, the likes of Ramos and Lung behind, they're not hanging about, but they can only go as quickly as the car ahead. Safety car in this lap. Safety car will be in this time, so it's been a long safety car period. Lap 16, it was deployed, and lap 28, it is going to come in. So we'll be back racing at the end of it, and uh, John Ferguson, the race leader. So really interesting now to see what the likes of Ramos Lung uh, and Balf can do because they're with a lot of traffic around them. So John Ferguson, the Snetterton winner, leads the way up through turn 13. They come and as the uh, Alpine safety car brings them round at the end of lap number 28, 12 laps under safety car, we're going to go racing this time. There is John Ferguson then ready to come up towards turn 15. 
Still with that little flapping bit of damage on the front of the Mercedes as John Ferguson comes through the corner, getting ready to accelerate away. So too Mark Sanson, so too Lucky Kara. Everybody bunched up behind then. Matt Topham in the Aston, Ian Campbell as we get ready to go racing. Uh, behind him is the GT4 notional leader, Stuart Middleton, with one stop to his name. And we go back racing then. On lap 29, the green flags fly, and it's going to be John Ferguson who leads the way down towards turn one. But in the background, have a look for Miguel Ramos, have a look for Darren Lung, because they are trying to work their way through traffic. Ramos up the inside of Boridin as he dives down the straight. Mickey Tim gets up the inside. Sorry, Andrew Howard gets up the inside there, and Mark Smith fends him off, runs Smith out wide. Behind the pair of them is Ian Loggy. So back to green. James Cottingham sprints away because, look, the uh, GT3 opposition, Loggy, Howard, Smith, they've all got stuck in GT4 traffic. Here comes Andrew Howard, gets up the inside, makes his move, picks them all off. But, of course, with all the traffic bunched like this, safety cars can breathe safety cars. So far, so good. They've all kept away from each other out of turn five and make the climb up the hill. So, Loggy to the inside line in number one, Mercedes. James Cottingham then out of turn six. There is Andrew Howard behind him and Howard in all of this has jumped Loggy, hasn't he? So the Aston Martin has got up past the number one Mercedes by the look of it. And I think also Mark Smith has gone through as well. Number 13, Lucky Kera pushing on, trying to make a move there against Mark Sansom. You've got Matt Topham, number 77, he's fourth. So John Ferguson edging away, but Cottingham is a man on a mission. He has caught right up to that leading quartet then. So James Cottingham ready to make a dive. Yes, on the inside up to turn 13. Gets up almost alongside the Aston. Ahead, Kera and Sansom go toe to toe. Here comes Topham round the outside of Lucky Kera. Look back from Mark Sansom's Lamborghini. That is Lucky Kera number 13 on the inside. Matt Topham behind and James Cottingham behind all of them looking for a way through to the inside goes the McLaren. Three wide almost at turn 15. Cottingham on the inside, Topham round the outside. That is brave, brave, brave by Matt Topham. And James Cottingham squeezes up the inside. If ever you've seen a Mercedes, breathe in. That was the moment. Ferguson leads the way. Lucky Kara second. Third is James Cottingham, I think, just on the inside line. Breaks late into turn one. He's done it. So Cottingham goes through. Topham fends him off on the outside line. And James has to give way. He has to slot back in. I thought he might be able to stay on the inside line up to here. Turn three, but he couldn't do it. And all of these cars, remember, have done two stops. So they're all on a comparable strategy right now. Mark Sampson just falling back in the queue a little bit, got shuffled out of it. And Lucky Kara, very quick driver, even though he's not done much mileage here this weekend, it doesn't show, does it? So, as it says on the rear wing, fastest Punjabi, right on the back of John Ferguson. And uh, Lucky Kara swarming all over the back of him now, looking for the race lead. Nose to tail these two. James Cottingham is the danger, though, in fourth place. See what he can do about Matt Topham. And John Ferguson is really under attack. Lucky Kara right behind him. Mercedes, McLaren, Aston, Mercedes in that lead battle pack. Cottingham comes over the brow up towards turn nine. Tries to get up the inside of Matt Topham. Can't do it, but he gives him the outside line for the approach for turn 10. That's not really the place to try, but the inside line for the 12 might be out of turn 11 here. Drop down the hill behind them. Mark Sanson is fifth and catching. Lucky Kara all over the back of John Ferguson, who's going to have to use his Formula Ford racecraft here like he did at Snetterton. Again, Matt Topham up the inside to try to take the second place away from Lucky Kara. He tries the outside line. We saw this a lap ago. Cottingham tried to buy into it then. He tries to do it again now. Kara, good exit speed. Topham flicks up the curb. Four for the race lead as they come now down towards turn 15. And Darren Lung, Dan Harper are getting a penalty. Let's just look at James Cottingham trying to make his move against Matt Topham, this is for third place as they come over the line. On the inside line is Cottingham. The Aston has got the grunt in a straight line. A 30-second stop-go penalty for the Lung and Harper BMW for overtaking under the safety car. There is Cottingham, and he still can't quite get past the Aston Martin down towards turn one. Great racing, this. It was a long time coming with that safety car period, but now we've got them back underway. Great stuff, the AMs especially here in the leading places. Ferguson, Kara, Topham, Cottingham, Sanson, Smith, uh, Chris Hart, seventh at the moment. So uh, having glad that Mercedes is still running at the pointy end. And Ramos is currently tenth. Ian Loggy is ninth, but he lost out really on that restart. Fell back quite a bit. So number 91, Darren Lung at the wheel of it. And he's going to have to serve a 30-second stop-go penalty because of Dan Harper overtaking under the safety cars we saw coming out of the pits into turn one. That's Loggy on the inside of Ian Campbell, but not able to go through. And Miguel Ramos has caught right up to him, 
And he's going to get past, is he? Whoops, contact with the Sky Tempest, the McLaren. Round goes Ramos. And that was Kevin Say at the wheel of it. They tagged coming out of turn eight. And around goes Ramos, just when he was going for a gap on the inside. Kevin Say had his nose there. The two touch, and around goes 88. So the garage 59, McLaren tapped into a spin. And Miguel Ramos now has to wait for a gap in the traffic, and that is going to be a long wait. This is Kevin Say's view. He went for the inside. Ramos came across the front. There's nowhere really that Kevin Say could go, I don't think, there. He was absolutely committed to the corner. And also in trouble is Lucky Carer. He was second, and he's had a spin at turn 13. So all of a sudden, McLaren's facing the wrong way. Two of them on the same lap. Different teams, but the outcome is the same. They both drop down the order. So Lucky Carer is unlucky Carer. And that now means it's a Mercedes 1-2. Ferguson to Cottingham. Now, what happened to Matt Topham? He's got damage. Look in the background. So maybe Topham got into Carer and turned him around. Certainly, he's been delayed. Ferguson then for Ram Racing. Team owner, Cottingham for two Cs. Right up behind him. Mercedes 1-2. And John Ferguson knows how to drive a wide car. You don't win in Formula Ford 1600 without knowing how to make a car wide. He leads. Cottingham, second. Absolutely together. This eight-wheel Mercedes over the brow. Third is now Mark Sanson. Chris Hart's up to fourth. That car goes tremendously well now. And then in fifth place, it is Mark Smith with Matt Topham with damage in sixth position. The two Mercedes come out of turn five. And again, Cottingham tries to squirt up the inside up the hill, but he can't really do it. Switches sides, thinks about turn six. Is that going to work? Not quite. So to be a very frustrated Miguel Ramos, the man that started on pole position, that's under investigation as Cottingham has a look to the inside line against John Ferguson. Over the brow, once more they come. Still no way through for James Cottingham, and he knows he needs to get on with this before the traffic catch up, and it's Mark Sansom catching, and now Cottingham commits very bravely to the outside line, but he runs out of racetrack. Can he stand his ground on the inside? That's the very slow Miguel Ramos limping back with damage by the look of it. So Ramos in a really awkward place there. Thankfully, everybody gets round him safely. And John Ferguson hangs on to that race lead. So this is the leading sextet of cars. Cottingham again tries to prize open the door on the inside line. Can't do it. Up towards 15, they come. Absolutely tied together. John Ferguson getting better and better in a GT3 car all the time. His second season came out of the GT4 ranks with the Speedworks Toyota. Stepped up to GT3 after a season. And now, having bought the Ram Racing team, was repaid with a win at Snetterton. But what about here? He's going to have to go defensive. Maintains that inside line. Cottingham, therefore, given the opportunity only of the hard yards on the outside. James up the curb, and the car unsettled coming into turn one. Miguel Ramos, I fear, heading for retirement in his McLaren. Lucky Carer, after the spin, down in 14th place. Uh, has rejoined at least as the leaders go through. They're starting to drop now. The seventh place car of Ian Loggy. Down towards the braking zone. Another shuffle behind look because being forced out wide, Chris Hart. And up the inside now goes Mark Smith there for the stop go penalty. Darren Lund. Those 30 seconds will feel like an eternity. Number 13 is under investigation as well for a pit stop. And that is going to be reviewed by race control. Number 13 being the race lab, Lucky Carer, Ewan Hankey, McLaren. And so also is number 12 going to be looked at for a pit stop infringement. The one motorsport Mercedes could be that they didn't serve the regulation time. Right now, the battle side by side again. James Cottingham, very, very brave round the outside. He's done it at turn 12. Back on the inside comes John Ferguson, and he retakes the advantage. Brilliant stuff, this, between the two of them. The two Mercedes toe-to-toe -to -toe, up through 12 and 13. Change and change again. Ferguson back in front. Cottingham second. Sansom third. Fourth Chris Hart. Fifth Mark Smith. Sixth Matt Topham. And Ian Loggy seventh falling away for whatever reason at the moment. It might, oh, there's Miguel Ramos who has barely made it to the pit lane. That car, a real problem as he limps on. I was going to say maybe number one Mercedes has been fueled heavier for longer, therefore, and that's why it's not quite got the pace of those ahead. Ian Loggy doing his best, though, to catch back up, and on that lap is quicker, in fact, because they've been trading uh, places ahead and delaying themselves, so Loggy is a bit closer to that leading battle pack now. So is Mark Sansom getting on the tail of Cottingham under braking as the field wriggles its way for the 34th time with an hour and three quarters to go up out of turn four. There is Ian Loggy, look at the back of the queue ahead of... 
Kevin say, Sean Bounds will be next, but gradually, because they're all tripping over themselves up the road ahead, they are closing, that next wave of cars getting a bit nearer. John Ferguson then turns through, heads uphill, right on his tail, James Cottingham. Uh, we haven't touched, touched on GT4 for a while, but this is it, where you've got a change, because Matt Cowley there has just got ahead of 23, uh, which is Josh Miller, and in turn, number 27 of Rob Bell, the GT3 McLaren, is in that mix as well, but he needs to get past them. Uh, I say Rob Bell, it's Mark Radcliffe now at the wheel, but uh, it was Rob Bell who brought the car in, having taken over, it's gone back to Mark Radcliffe, and he'll clear the traffic as we go back to the race leaders. Where to look next? Three, four for the lead, five, six, seven, Loggy's back with them. I've got a feeling there are more penalties coming. We need to see where Darren Lung is as well. 15th provisionally after that stop-go penalty. He needs another safety car to bring him back into the mix, ideally, really now. And you never know, it might happen looking at the way they're going at it for the race lead. Chris Hart then, really good to see that drive tack Mercedes going so well, comes through. There, John Ferguson still under huge pressure. And that's the end of the day for the 88 McLaren. Miguel Ramos into the garage. Down towards turn one. And there, the Ginetta just rejoining after a pit stop. So that is the car of Ian Duggan as Cottingham tries to use the traffic to his advantage. Goes round the outside contact. John Ferguson clatters up the inside line. Cottingham gets run out wide. He'll have the inside for the next corner. And here comes Mark Sansa around the outside of the Lamborghini. He runs out of racetrack and goes all over the curb. So John Ferguson hangs on to the race lead. Got the touring car scrapping away this with the leading on each other down towards turn five. Cottingham still can't find a way through, but Ferguson goes out wide, makes the run up the hill now. Is there a gap on the inside? Not quite. John Ferguson with a very wide car that time around. And James Cottingham getting perhaps ever more feisty himself because he knows he hasn't been able to find a way by. And he knows that he's under attack from those behind him. So out of turn eight, he comes. And over the brow once more with more back markers up the road. 18 it is. That's Dan Vaughan. Two pit stops done for the Parker McLaren. And drama for Chris Hart. He was running fourth and he's had a puncture by the look of it. You can see the... Uh, right rear corner does not look as it should, and that car is stranded as Cottingham to the inside, almost contact again with Ferguson. Sanson tries to get in on the act as well. Matt Topham is right with them. Ian Loggy is right back with them as well. Coming out of turn 13 now. Fantastic stuff, this, but it's been a little bit fractious on this lap. And James Cottingham once more switches sides. Can he get up the inside? Not quite, not quite, but he's still committed to the line. But no, John Ferguson's car just has that extra hint of bike coming off the corner that's enabling him to stay ahead. Now, what about Chris Hart's Mercedes? Can he get that going again? Can he get it out of harm's way as the leaders go through? Ferguson, Cottingham, then Mark Sansom to the inside line. The battered Aston is next in the hands of Matt Topham. And Ian Loggy is up into fifth. Kevin says thanks to Sean Balfe. He's in seventh place, getting close all the time as well. And then... Tim Creswick in eighth place. He's not quite with the leading group, but that car has brought back loads of places after almost being a lap down earlier on in the race. Over the curbs they run, coming out of turn four. So the Ram Racing Mercedes, a very wide car. John Ferguson knowing exactly where to put it to defend, crossing him again, tight to line out of the hairpin, tries to get up the inside, heading up the hill, but John Ferguson is able to defend. The fact that he's having to defend is building this queue of cars when finally a cork pops out of the bottle, expect a huge amount of shuffling. A contact between Loggy and Cottingham has been noted. That's not the first skirmish that John Ferguson has had. We saw one very early on, remember, uh, when he got past the Lamborghini, and that's where that little bit of damage has been accounted for on the side of number 15. This is Mark Sanson in the bar where Lamborghini in third place, still hanging over that spot almost able to challenge the leaders. He's quick here, but that's largely because Cottingham got pulled a little bit by a defensive Ferguson. Nose to tail, they arrive at turn 13. Ian Loggy goes out wide, and Kevin Say gets up the inside, so a place change there. Look, the Sky Tempesta McLaren through on the outside. Loggy back on the inside, can't retake the place, though. Had a go, couldn't do it. So Kevin Say up on the tail of Matt Topham. This McLaren getting stronger and stronger, it seems, as the race wears on, but the two Mercedes on this lap completion have gone away from Mark Sanson, who in turn has got that very battle-scarred Aston Martin right behind him. Through they come, 
over the line for the Aston. Not losing anything on the aero, is it? Despite the loss of bodywork. Through on the inside, and Matt Topham should be able to make the move here. He's alongside Mark Sansom in the Lamborghini. He's got the inside line for turn three and breaks as late as he dares. Sansom, though, knows the road's going to come to him here on the turn four climb. So he's still got his nose in front. Topham's going to get run out wide over the kerb, and he does. And Sansom stays for the moment in third place as again Ferguson leads Cottingham for third place. Big dive to the outside line. Matt Topham, and he has done it, has he? Almost, almost, almost. This is Kevin Say's view. He's fifth. Second in Silver Am to Sanson, who does lose out. Topham has done it. He's cleared him going into turn seven. So that's the change for third place. An hour and 40 minutes just under, still to run. And the nature of the circuit with lefts going into rights, delivering great racing all the way around. Cottingham fed up of staring at the back of Ferguson's Mercedes. Which way does he go next? The inside at turn 10. This should be the race lead, surely. He's got the inside line. John Ferguson goes wide, but then the road will come to him. He's got the inside line for the next corner and the one after it. It's left at 12. It's left at 13. Cottingham is ahead, though. He's done it right round the outside. Brilliant job done by James Cottingham. And he deserves that. He'd worked really, really hard for that. Great stuff. Cottingham leads. And now we'll see whether he can pull away. Matt Topham catching up to them anyway, as they're in GT4, 62 goes ahead, Matt Nicol jones ahead of Josh Miller. So that, for the moment, is going to give us Mustangs first and second of those that have made two pit stops, does it? Yes, because the two Toro Verdi Ginettas uh, have only made one. Into the pits limped Chris Hart, so having said he was going well, I may have put the mockers on in there, because that car is limping in. And an incident involving that car and 42, the Kel Campbell McLaren is being looked at, so that might account for where the puncture came from. What has happened to number 42? That's in ninth place, falling back a little bit. So, James Cottingham now up front and getting away. The other car to keep tabs on, Darren Lung, 13th after the stop-go penalty. This was the move, James Cottingham, hugely brave, round the outside at turn 12, got the line for 13, got it slowed down, made the corner, excellent bit of driving that. So James Cottingham is the race leader and is a second to the good as they climb the hill. So Ferguson, Topham, Samson, Say, Loggy. That's the second to sixth train. And again, Topham now will have to do what Cottingham did, and that's work, work, work to find a way past. And while he's stuck, so the lead gap is extending. On board with the Sky Tempesta racing. McLaren, Kevin Say up over the brow. Where is there a gap? Not on the inside there, not really on the outside. So the McInerney's driver has to plan the move, thinks about the inside line. That's turn 12, no gap. Turn 13 is an overtaking opportunity, and Sanson goes wide. Now, can Kevin Say get up the inside? Not really, because Ian Loggy is looking for a way past him, but they've all bunched up then. Fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Sean Balfe is back at the races as well now. So, James Cottingham building that gap. Bear in mind that on the last pit stop, which will be the next, they're going to junk 15 seconds. Ian Loggy will junk 10 and 20 for John Ferguson to give way to Raffaele Marchiello because that's when you serve the compensation times on the final pit stop of the race. Kevin Say, in the meantime, lines up to try and retaliate, but Ian Loggy is ahead of him on the outside line into turn one. Goes wide over the kerb, but he's got the job done. Mercedes from McLaren, but up front, it's Mercedes, Mercedes, Aston, Lamborghini. That's the leading four. So you can see now James Cottingham sprinting away, building that gap over this long line of cars. Second to seventh now, Sean Balfe right with them. Comes out of the hairpin. And despite that damage on Matt Topham's Aston that he will give way to Marcus Clatton, it's not slowing him down any. And bear in mind, Matt, very inexperienced in GT3 terms, but uh, doing a great job here. Over the brow then comes that long queue. In GT4, here is Mustang Alley as they come through. So Matt Cowley ahead of Matt Nicol Jones. Darren Lung comes through behind. Now remember, that BMW is trying to recover after its stop go penalty. Next up is 56. Now that is the notional GT4 leader, but it's only done one of the three pit stops. It's a stop behind the others. So although Stuart Middleton is effectively a lap up on the Mustangs, that's got to do two pit stops, whereas the Mustangs only have to do one. 
so it's a notional class lead it will not keep that given the fact that it's uh, got two stops to make. Number 23 behind is another two-stopper. So the GT4 battle, really, are the two Mustangs and that Aston Martin. The Ginetta in the way a little bit, even though it's a lap up, but it's not part of the on-the-road fight. This on-the-road fight, still well and truly alive. Ferguson from Topham, Sanson, Loggy, having cleared Kevin Say, Ian Loggy now coming on strong at the start of this stint after the restart. He was dropping away, but then He's regrouped and he's caught back up and gained places. So Ian Loggy doing a good stint now. That brings the car back into the equation, the two C's entering. Which of course will be taken over for the last stint of the race by Phil Keane. So it's going to be another fascinating stint, especially given that some of the cars will be out of position given the compensation pit stop that they've got to make. James Cottingham ideally wants to be 15 seconds ahead when he pits to preserve that for uh, Johnny Adam. Side by side, Loggy versus Sanson now at the top of the hill. Ian Loggy on the inside line goes through, makes the move against the Lamborghini. So Loggy up to fourth. All of a sudden, place is falling like skittles to him as he comes out of the corner. So that is uh, Mercedes as the fuel load lightens. It's definitely coming on strong and he's around the outside of the GT4 traffic for good measure. So the reigning champion hustles on. short bound then seven that car runs closing onto the back of Mark Sampson who's also under attack from Kevin Say here so you've got the two Barwell Lamborghinis sandwiching the Garage 59 run Sky Tempesta racing McLaren so as they turn out of turn 15 who goes Kevin Say up towards the line so James Cottingham is 5.4 seconds ahead and really, the car that he's trying to stay ahead of is Matt Topham because John Ferguson has an even longer stop. A 30-second stop-go penalty now for the Broadhurst McDermott One Motorsport Mercedes for a pit exit infringement. 30-second stop-go penalty for that car. 72, great hard. This is Mark Sampson under attack from Kevin Say. And it's the view coming out of turn four. down to the hairpin through the traffic that is the number 12 Mercedes that's the one that's just caught the penalty getting out of the way and uh, as Edward Dermott relative racing rookie but improving all the time gets out of the GT3 traffic's way uh, that pit stop for the stop go imminent right Matt Topham right with Ferguson but Loggy right with the pair of them so second third fourth fifth Sansom and sixth Kevin Say this is all about the kickoff, I think, especially given that they've got another back marker to negotiate. Napier Zano in that Ginetta. Through goes Ferguson. Here comes Topham. Here comes the Loggy. And he is coming up now towards the right hander. Turn 10. Topham to the outside of the Mercedes. That's going to be the inside here for turn 12. John Ferguson just fends him off as they come up the hill. Others run wide over the curb. Kevin Say gets stuck behind the Ginetta. There's nowhere to go. Ignatius Zanon, wrong place, wrong time in number 56. Kevin Say to the outside line. And that's lost him a big chunk of time to number 72 then. Ian Loggy on his third warning, incidentally, for track limits. Your third gets you a, a black and white flag and a fourth gets you a drive through. So Loggy needing to be careful. Up towards the line goes Kevin Say. So the Mercedes of Ferguson, the battered Aston, comes out from behind of Matt Topham. Ian Loggy right there behind as they drop down towards turn one. Sanson next in the queue, having been able to get away from Kevin Say. Ferguson is the one that goes a little bit wider this time. But James Cottingham now, he's 9.4 seconds up the road. He's doing a brilliant job, especially given these are all holding each other up. John Ferguson is doing what he has to do to try and preserve second place. But it's also, of course, delaying everybody behind and giving James Cottingham a free ride. He had to work very hard to get that race lead anyway, but now that he's got it, he's not for wasting it. We've also lost Andrew Howard, uh, which we haven't really picked up on, but the Aston Martin has pitted and never rejoined. So 97 is another one that we have lost from the race. Mercedes, Aston, Mercedes, second, third and fourth. Over the brow comes number one Mercedes then. So Ian Loggy once more lining up to have a go to try to wriggle past the Aston, but the Aston in turn wants to get past John Ferguson's Mercedes. 
out of 72 goes through. That's Mark Sanson in fifth place, ahead of Kevin Say, ahead of Sean Balfe. So second to seventh here, all in a queue. And John Ferguson doing what he has to do. He's defending for position. He's quite entitled so to do, but everybody else is trapped behind him. So Loggy has chipped his way forward through the battle pack. Now he makes a move on the inside of the very wide Matt Topham. Let's see what he can do on the inside line coming into 15. Is he going to be able to make that move? Couldn't quite do it. So over the line they come. Uh, it is damage to the front of the Aston, we understand, from Steph in the pit lane that's caused that car to be a retirement. So big disappointments. We didn't really get to see very much of Nicky team in that, but we are seeing a great fight for second place as the cars now come down towards turn one yet again. Lead gap, ten and a half seconds now. So heading up the hill, there is the taper flapping. John Ferguson still running second. Hard on the brakes, into the hairpin goes the Sean Balfe. Lambo upper place at the expense of Kevin Say. So Sean into the top six, Sandy Mitchell to come. So looking forward to this, the next stint when you've got admittedly delayed cars after compensation pit stops, but it's going to be really interesting to see how it all pans out once you get the likes of Adam, Marcello, Clutton, Keane, Tregertha, Froggart and Mitchell in those leading cars. So there is John Ferguson coming up over the brow. Now John Ferguson has just for the moment shaken off Ian Loggy, who's got himself up past Topham, but he's also about to encounter traffic as well. So now, John Ferguson needs to be careful getting through the back markers as the field comes out of turn 14. Kevin Say wants that place back from Sean Bald, but he can't do it. Marcus Clatton getting ready to go. Other drivers getting ready also in the pit boxes for the next stint. Remember, it's an hour and 40 maximum that a driver can do on some of the pros have already had a very short stint of about 10 laps. It's around about, let's say, 20 minutes. So the uh, drivers, the teams monitoring all of this will be mindful of when they can put a driver into a car. Balf around the outside of Loggy. They've all got caught up in GT4 traffic. Kevin Say back up the inside of Sean Balf, makes the move for sixth place. He's done it through on the inside, although Balf tries to fight back at turn four. Still side by side of the McLaren around the outside, retakes the position. Over the brow they come, out to the hairpin at turn five. Kevin Say tries to block, gets a little bit crossed up because he breaks late and was offline, and that opens the door for Balfe to go back through. Sean Balfe retakes the place then, goes back through on the inside line, one up and one back for Kevin Say, and this lead battle, fantastic racing. The, the nature of the circuit with the hairpins, with a, a left into a right, into a left into a right, continually giving drivers on either side of the road the line the next corner or the one but one after it continues to shuffle the pack and Ian Loggy now released sets off in pursuit of another place so as he comes down the hill around the outside of traffic there goes the Barwell Lamborghini Sean Bow at the wheel of it and way up the curb James Cottingham the GT3 championship leader winner in the one hour opener at Alton Park winner of the two hour race at Donington. So to complete the set of a one hour, a two hour and a three hour, he's got to win here, hasn't he? Comes over the line and right now looking very, very strong indeed. James Cottingham building that gap with all the squabbling that's going on behind him. The GT4 battle being shuffled again because Mike Simpson has just pitted for a second stop in number uh, 86 and 56 is in as well and contact there because John Ferguson dive bomb number 23 Aston Josh Miller turned in and oh so nearly glanced off the back of the Mercedes, that rather compromised the Aston, but I think they've all survived it. Matt Topham has gone through as well. So Ferguson is second, Topham is third. Sansom is back up into fourth at the expense of Ian Loggy. There is the Lambo, and where's the Mercedes got to? Where has the Mercedes got to? Ian Loggy has gone missing, has he? No, he's there. Sorry, he was hidden as they came over the brow. So Loggy fights back on the inside line and he retakes the place. So Mark Sanson had got ahead of Ian Loggy, but he's lost out again. The Mercedes goes through, back up on the inside to retake position. Driving standards flag, James Cottingham, race leader.
black and white flag, driving standards. Now, was that the rather aggressive move up the inside of the kerb? Can only be in the traffic, I would have thought, because he's cleared this battle pack behind long since, and it was 11 seconds clear last time around. There's that confirmation of the situation. John Ferguson is being given a warning also about track limits at turn one, second offence. So if we assume that the maximum you can do under the regulations is an hour and 40, and let's say that the pros got uh, 10 laps, or 10 minutes, 10 laps, 10 laps, and two minutes a lap, roughly, uh, by about an hour and 20 to go, you can start realistically thinking about putting the pros back in. And we're at an hour and 24 to go. So through comes 61, which is Matt Cowley, and we'll now take the lead of GT4, Matt Nickel Jones, the team owner behind. They now move themselves ahead of the Ginettas. Stuart Middleton still in the pit lane. So that's Loggy in fourth over the line. Ferguson is still second, top of his third, and here comes Loggy for a look, but he can't do it. So number 61, Mustang, Matt Cowley at the wheel. The very successful Ford the Ford racer. He's really made a name for himself in GT4 cars. Still sadly flies under the radar a bit, but Matt. Uh, a lot more better than people perhaps sometimes notice and he knows this car inside out going really nicely new co-driver yet another new co-driver for him for this year Eric Evans the Mustang second in GT4 62 which has got Matt Nickel Jones the man that runs Academy Motorsport behind the wheel at the moment and Ian Loggy is on his toes to try to get up past Matt Topham as they head into turn eight can't do it big slide though from the Aston this is his chance Gets the drive out of the corner, over the brow, side by side. Loggy on the outside, but he's through already as they come into turn nine, job done. So through goes Ian Loggy, up into third spot now. John Ferguson is the next target. And number seven is being investigated now. Well, it doesn't matter, the car's out of the race. It was a pit lane infringement, but the car has uh, done something in the pits as through. On the inside at turn 13, in traffic goes Ferguson. Loggy tries to squirt up the inside of Matt Cowley as well there and does so, so he's not giving anything away from Ferguson. So over the timing line comes 61. So over the line comes through. So as the field accelerates by, there is Ferguson, but Loggy close enough to make a move now as he comes to the inside. Not close enough, though. Couldn't really make a proper dive up the inside. Were that the last lap, were that a pro, possibly it would have been a different situation. But Ian Loggy, mindful that he needs to finish and bank points, and now's not the time for heroics. So, uh, in GT4, Matt Cowley leads, but having said that Matt Nickel Jones was second, they've just rolled the dice to make the third pit stop. So that car has just come in for the final stop. So there is 61 leading the way, and that's going to bring number 23 Aston back into second in GT4. So the outside line at turn five goes Loggy, but he's going to run out of road and get sideways as well there. John Ferguson has learnt fast about defensive driving in a GT3 car. Uh, Matt Nichol Jones gets out. Will Moore will take over once it's been refuelled as Loggy crawls all over the back there. Look of the John Ferguson Mercedes. Over the brow of the hill, then down towards turn nine. This is where Loggy got a move done on top of a lap ago. Can't do it this time. But as he heads up towards turn 10, John Ferguson again maintains track position, keeps the line for the corner, and makes sure that Ian Loggy is not going to get through there. This brings Topham back into the mix. Behind them, Mark Sampson and Sean Balfour together. Sampson ahead at the moment as Loggy again jinks to the inside line. And the door is opened, coming out of the corner, but that gives Ian Loggy the outside line for turn 14. John Ferguson hustles his way back to the line. Loggy on the outside line. Matt Topham tries to get to the inside as well, and he has done so. But has the Aston got the run off the corner? The answer, I think, is going to be no. But he tries to stand his ground on the inside at 15. Loggy has to give him a bit of room. And now we'll see what's got the most amount of horsepower in the straight line. Aston and Mercedes absolutely together. Aston Martin ahead as they cross the line by 22 thousandths. Matt Topham has got the inside line as well, all the way down now towards turn one, and Loggy is able to do it under braking, so the Mercedes goes back through. Goes wide, but he goes back through. But he's got to do all that work again to get onto turns with John Ferguson, so tried to make a move. In the end, actually lost the place oh so briefly, and will now have to spend some of the time on this 48th lap, getting back onto turns with the flying Ferguson. Cottingham, though, is 17.9 seconds ahead. He will lose 
15 of those on the next pit stop, though, because that's the compensation time that he's got to serve. But John Ferguson, don't forget, has got to serve 20. So Raffaele Marciello needs a final stint safety car, really, to get that into the mix. And the gaps aren't really stretching because of the battling that's going on. So there is Sean Balf. Heads uphill. Sean hasn't been on the podium this year, oddly, with uh, Sandy Mitchell, given how competitive both of them are. But uh, this could be with another stint to come and a change of driver to you. One to watch. Ian Loggy right back on the tail of John Ferguson. So he has managed to recoup the lost ground and also shake off Matt Topham in the process. This is where he made his move a lap ago. Didn't work then. And a driving standards flag now for John Ferguson. And that is for a final track them into fence at turn one. So both of these are on a, a third offence. The next one is going to be a drive through if they transgress again. So this battle is going to be a rather tense one, I think, for the teams now. That's OK from Loggy. Two wheels up the kerb, up to the right side of the white line. Through they come, second and third. Very nearly 20 seconds now behind the race leader. And that, therefore, would be enough to preserve the lead for number four Mercedes, even allowing for the pit stop. So there, number 56, which has gone back to Freddie Tomlinson and has fallen into 22nd overall. Second, third, fourth, with Matt Topham closing back up again. Look as they come now through turn one. Drive-through penalty for number one. Ian Loggy has got a drive-through penalty for track limit of offences. So the number one Mercedes gets the drive-through. And he's going to make the move for second place anyway down at turn five. But that's a bit of a... Pyrrhic victory in a sense because Ian Loggy, although he's up into second place, is going to have to serve that drive through. There is the second of the Academy Mustangs coming in. So Matt Cowley to give way to Eric Evans. 62 has pitted. And now it's time for 61. Matt Cowley to give way. Both drivers out of the car as the refueling goes on. And that is a GT4 Silver, so remember it gets another 14 seconds over and above everything else. Matt Topham now comes up to have a go at John Ferguson, but look at the way that Loggy has scarpered already. Just like we saw when Cottingham went through, so it's the case there. And a spin for the Andre Borodin, Ollie Webb, McLaren. The Greystone GT entry on the outside of turn 13. It's Borodin at the wheel of it, and it's as yet not for moving. So the race director will keep an eye on that. It's about 30 seconds, really, for a car to cycle through from a, a stall to being able to restart. So they'll give the driver the time rather than fly any flags. But if it ain't moving after that, then intervention might be needed. Cottingham leads the way. Loggy then second on the road. But is he in this time? Yes, he is. So he's in for the drive through. So Ian Loggy got himself into second, then has to serve that drive through penalty. There he is. This is the walk of shame, as it were, down the pit road. So number one, Mercedes crawls down the pit lane, place after place after place, lost. Particularly galling, given how competitive he'd had to be to get up through the order. And with that battle pack so tight, more places lost. Where is he? He's behind the wall, he can just see the top of the car creeping into view. So, John Ferguson is back to second, Matt Topham is third and fourth. Look, is Mark Sansom, fifth behind Kevin Say. Climb up the hill. Number 18, McLaren, Dan Vaughan being negotiated then, the GT4 car. That has fallen quite a long way back, relatively speaking. It's ninth in silver in GT4. Of course, it was well up early on when it uh, did a long first stint, whereas others were making an early pit stop under the first safety car. But now it's sort of fallen quite a long way back in the queue. Chris Hart, by the way, number 50, did keep going. He pitted and a new tyre put on the drive tack Mercedes. It's still running in 19th place. Number 13 which is the lucky carer Ewan Hankey car, a two-second stop-go penalty for a short pit stop. That car's 12th overall at the moment, lucky carer at the wheel of it. So, Mercedes number 15 hanging on for the moment to second spot. An hour and 15 minutes of what's been a very lively race, full of drama, full of incidents, still to go. And where is the next pit stop, the final pit stop from anybody going to come? Well, three stops done by Loggy and by Lung, but of course one is a penalty stop, so you can't count the third as the regulation one, of course. Another driving standards flag being fluttered, and it's for Matt Topham, now in third place. 
So James Cottingham has done an outstanding job in this stint. Had to work very hard to get through the traffic, but once he's done so, disappeared up the road. And in GT4, number 23, Aston, feeling pressure from all sides. But that's Josh Miller and Michael Johnston in the BMW is the man that he's battling with. Uh, and then behind Johnston is going to be in class next, the number 29 McLaren. Some of those GT4 cars out of sequence on the wrong lap, as it were. Ed McDermott, a lap down after a drive through. He gets out of the way and makes a pit stop. Had to dart across the road there. So in he comes. And so here is number 12 down the pit road. And 23, Josh Miller versus number 14, Michael Johnston. They, for the moment, are ahead of the Mustangs, but they owe us a pit stop. So that's the GT4 class lead at the moment, the category lead, uh, but it may not be once they do their last pit stop because they'll drop back behind the Mustangs. That is Phil Keane getting ready to go. And it's going to be a harder last stint maybe than he was anticipating. Now with Ian Loggy having fallen back into ninth place after that drive through. So all that hard work really coming to nothing. John Ferguson gets up alongside Eric Evans in 61 Mustang which stayed ahead of 62, so they're still in numerical order, the Academy Motorsport Mustangs, and should get the class lead back when the other GT4 cars make their stops. Over the timing line comes number 72, Mark Sanson, who has got Kevin Say's McLaren behind him, and then Sean Balfe next up as they drop down into turn one here. So out of the right-hander. McLaren hanging on to fifth place. Chris Froggart to take that over. Sandy Mitchell will take over the car behind. And that is going to go rapidly for sure as number 29 McLaren. Ian Goff gets run out wide by John Ferguson. Very wide and Matt Topham goes one side and then the other trying to take advantage of this. They've both got to be careful of track limit abuses, but Matt Topham is having a really good go for a GT3 rookie. You wouldn't think it, he's almost alongside Ferguson. But again, that Mercedes has just better traction off the corner and stays ahead as they make that climb up the hill. John Ferguson comes through. And behind look, Mark Sanson has got Kevin Say. Sean Balfe, intriguingly, not quite able to make a move against that McLaren. He's been there or thereabouts. Maybe the traffic got in the way on that lap, which is why he's lost a bit of ground. Tries to play catch up again as they head up towards turn 10, out of which James Cottingham has long since turned. So that's the race order with an hour and 12 on the clock. And Matt Topham is determined to crack John Ferguson's Mercedes before he has to come into the pit lane and give way to Marcus Classon. Side by side for second, and Topham has done it, heading into turn 15. Got a great exit from 14, he's up the curb as well, but the damaged Aston Martin finally goes through. So Matt Topham has worked really, really hard for that second place, and that gives hope to Mark Sanson and Kevin Say behind as they now make the run over the line and see what they can do about the John Ferguson Mercedes ahead. We're getting a drive-through penalty for Ed McDermott for track limits, and that is James Cottingham's car being given over to Johnny Adams. So now Matt Topham finds himself in the lead of the race, short term, admittedly, because the car has to do its last pit stop, but Johnny Adam will take over number four. Remember, it's got to make an extra 15-second pit stop. So fuel goes in, new driver goes in, possibly a new set of tyres, depending on how they've uh, taken the tyre strategy, although the Mercedes, as Johnny was saying, pre-race relatively kind on the rubber. Meantime, Sanson has a go now to get past John Ferguson up the hill. Can't quite do it at six, wants to switch sides. And Kevin Say coming back at the pair of them. Out of turn eight, back of the loud pedal goes Kevin Say. He was there to be tangled with Midwell Ramos earlier on, although nothing's come of that, seemingly. John Ferguson hangs on to the place as Mark Sanson queues up behind him, and Matt Topham then released trying to put in some qualifying style laps now to give Marcus Klassen a chance into the final stint. So Kevin Say comes through. And up towards 
here in the lap. Kevin Say on the back of Samson, Sean Balf, uh, sixth. I was telling you a lie earlier when I said he'd not been on the podium this year. They did have a, a win in the first Snetterton one hour race, uh, Sean with Sandy Mitchell. So uh, that's been the, the big moment of the year. In comes Ferguson then to give way to Raffaele Marcello, but this, of course, is going to have the extra 20 seconds on the stop. Ian Loggy is coming to give way to Phil Keane as well. Away back into the race from GT4 goes number 14, the BMW that was fighting with the 23 Aston a little while ago. There is Johnny Adam on his way down the pit lane to rejoin the race. Samson, Say, Balf, still the same order. John Ferguson then giving way with his long stop to Lello, to Raffaele Marcello, who's done the fastest lap of the race, remember? So again, the Lamborghinis with the McLaren around them. Number 23 here, Josh Miller, currently leading in GT4, but don't forget that car has an extra 10 seconds to serve uh, by way of compensation on the last pit stop, in addition to the extra 14 for being a silver entry anyway. So it's going to be a very long last stop for number 23. But right now, it is ahead in GT4 from there, number 17, Harry George, the Caterham graduate at the wheel of the uh, Mercedes. Change of car from McLaren to Mercedes for the team for this weekend. So Matt Topham in his first Aston Martin GT3 outing, doing a great job. Ian Loggy has done and will be frustrated, certainly, about the penalty as he walks away. But let's see what Phil Keane can now do, having got behind the wheel of that car. So there, 17, second in GT4, Enduro switching from the McLaren to the Mercedes. And uh, Harry George, in his first season of GT4 racing, looking very accomplished indeed, Caterham Academy runner-up, came from 310R, runner-up, and then into GT4 racing. He's got Phil Keane behind him, 10th place overall. And that's Kevin Say down the pit road. Gives way to Chris Froggart and does the belts. Needs to unhook everything and get all the cables out of the way to make that stop a little bit easier. Takes his cushion with him. Door closed, car empty because it's going to be refuelled. And therefore the car must be empty in there. Effectively, two-part pit stops. You can only do the refuelling work and then everything else. So tyres and driver change uh, come subsequently. Incident involving Martin Plowman and John Ferguson under investigation. Interesting. Didn't think they were together on the road, but it's being looked at. And an incident involving Lucky Carer and Matt Topham is going to be investigated after the race. What thickens. Away goes Raffaele Marcello then after a very long stop with that extra 20 seconds to serve. Please, he thinks, somebody to throw it off the road and bring out the safety car to give me a sporting chance. Right, James Cottingham then has done a great job in number four, Mercedes. A win could be on the cards here, but he's with Steph. I am joined by James Cottingham. You have just come in from the lead of the race, but it wasn't an easy one for you. You know, the opening safety cars put you in a difficult position. You've had to fight your way back up to the front. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, no, loved it in the end. Uh, at the start, I could see that it was going to be a great race with Ramos. I felt like we had the pace, but I'm very conscious of the championship, very conscious of behaviour warning points. Uh, and then the two safety cars, it seemed like we're with the full course yellow and the other safety car behind it forever. But once it was gone, the guys told me how long I had to go. It's pretty hot by then already. Um, and yeah, getting past um, Mr. Ferguson was very tricky, uh, very tricky indeed, I think. Uh, you know, I kept my nose out of trouble as much as I could and managed to get him in the end. Luckily, it's a big circuit, so there are lots of places you can try different things. And then from there, I just wanted to get my head down, I was just asking the guys you know, every other lap, what's the gap, what's the gap, because we've got a penalty to serve at the next stop. So uh, with where we came in, fingers crossed, if we can maintain that gap, then it gets reduced down. Um, we could be looking at podium, which would be amazing. All right, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could be looking at a win, never mind a podium, James, because the gap that he pulled was so big. And John Ferguson may have been hard to get past, but he also did him a favour because he was just as difficult for everybody else to pass. And that means that the uh, lead gap has stretched. So three hour race, three mandatory driver changes uh, and the uh, pit stop times you can see quicker for the GT3 and the GT4s. So the uh, cars then come over the brow of the hill and with the 
compensation times to be served. Number 15 has done it in GT3, so is number four, so is number one, so those are done. Uh, in GT4, number 90 owes us a pit stop. What about 36? That's due in as well, 23. So longer pit stops in GT4 anyway, and those silvers get a further 14 seconds. The cars are heavier as well with that 25 uh, kilos of ballast. So James Cottingham up the hill, heads to turn 13. James Cottingham, Johnny Adam, forgive me, uh, because we've heard from James out of the car and his work is done. So for 64 minutes, he can now monitor the progress of Johnny Adam. That's Sean Balfin to give way to Sandy Mitchell. Sandy saying pre-race, he'd not raced here before, but uh, I think did a few laps here at the Lamborghini World Final last year. He was certainly one of many factory drivers that was being prevailed upon to do different things with uh, corporate guests, whether it was hot laps or the uh, skid pan driving. Number 23, this is the last stop, and it'll be a slow, long one, therefore, for the uh, 23 Aston. And away goes now Marcus Clatton. Now, this will be interesting, because Marcus is another very quick driver who perhaps sometimes doesn't get the credit he deserves, and blasts down the pit lane with, right on his tail, the Aston, the Lamborghini of Will Tregurfer, and that now will be the 23 final pit stop to put Seb Hopkins back in the car. Raffaele Marciello goes through, so that long pit stop with the extra compensation time served. And in GT4, number 62 goes through. Now that is Will Moore, who's chasing after teammate Eric Evans. And number 14, BMW, is now ahead and that means that Chris Solkeld, who has also, I think I'm right in saying, done his last pit stop, is up ahead. In fact, doesn't 62 have another one to do? I thought we'd seen those cars serve their last pit stop, but the timing screen says otherwise. However, I thought they'd done their third. Uh, 91 BMW, Darren Lung pressing on. So number 14 BMW now in a strong position. Darren Lung fourth. He's got to give way again to Dan Harper. There's Johnny Adam up towards the line. Comes through. And that car now fifth. So the on-the-road leader, number 76, Tim Cresswick, with the Mercedes ahead of Mark Radcliffe's McLaren. They need a final stop. And then for third place, what well, it should now be, uh, Darren Lung, because Sean Balf is in the pit lane. F up to fourth will go Johnny Adam. Uh, and then... This car for fifth place, Chris Froggett. Sixth behind is Marcus Clatton. Seventh is going to be Will Tregurfa. And now Sandy Mitchell has left the pit lane. So we'll see there, 78 in the background. So that's going to join in. Is it behind or ahead of its teammate? It's going to be close. It's behind. So it's eighth place there for number 78 of Sandy Mitchell. Eighth after the pit stop. So it still gives him work to do, but ahead are a few that still have a last stop to serve. So the Lamborghinis go out of turn five. Marcus Clatton shaking them off, though, and Raffaele Marciello now, although he's done the fastest lap of the race, he's going to have to do it again and again and again to get anywhere near uh, a good result for that car now after the longer pit stop that he's just had to serve. Lamborghini's through, up the hill, and this is now a proper battle for place. Two pros, Will Tregurfa, Sandy Mitchell, Sandy the Lamborghini factory driver, so much is expected of him, the now Nottingham-based Scotsman. Tim Cresswick into the pit lane in 76, the 76 team Mercedes, to give way to Consta Lapalainen, who had a spin yesterday, and a drive-through penalty now for Will Tregurfa, number 72. So, having just said that he was battling with Sandy Mitchell, not anymore, he's not. Will Tregurfa cops a penalty. Johnny Adam, in the meantime, is going to inherit the race lead shortly because there's a stop owed by Darren Lung. There's a stop owed for Mark Radcliffe to put Rob Bell in the car. And so, Johnny Adam in a very strong position. He's raced here before. 
in the European Le Mans series, for example. Uh, James Cottingham has raced here in Historics, I think I'm right in saying, plus they did test here. And so the car, very strong indeed. And the Mercedes AMG GT3, which has been one of the best user-friendly GT3 cars ever built, uh, has really been well suited to this circuit. It's just a strong car and it's easy on the tyres and on the brakes. And there it is after a great stint by James Cottingham looking oh so strong up front. But Chris Froggart is now up into second place. So that's the car that's doing the chasing. He's a long way back, but Chris Froggart, with a lot of help from the very quick Kevin Say, and Chris is a very quick driver himself. He's in second spot, and Marcus Klassen behind is lapping quicker. So, although oh, the safety car deployed again. Safety car deployed. This is just what Chris Froggart needs to get onto terms. It's what Raffaele Marchiello needs as well. Now, safety car deployed. Expect a mass rush into the pit lane, and that's the reason for it. At the exit of turn 15, it is the Freddie Tomlinson Ginetta in the gravel, right on the edge of the road. And there's not much that can be done to prevent that. So on lap 59, safety car number three, and it's for the 56 Ginetta off the road at turn 15, as you can see. So the recovery vehicle is on its way. Oh, it's turn 14, forgive me, the approach to 15. So coming into Sargresh, he's lost it and around has gone the Ginetta. So the safety car deployed. And very quickly this time, the crew on hand. So the safety car scrambled. We're up to the Mercedes this time, and it has picked up, not the race leader, but it's got everybody under control. Uh, that's number 13 that it has scooped up. 13th place, you and Hanky. So that would be a wave by. And the leading car is not that far behind. And it will be 91 BMW now, because Mark Radcliffe is in the pit lane. So effectively, the safety car scrambled. Everybody queues up behind, and then uh, order will be restored. So that's the leader, but it's got a pit stop to come. So it might be at the end of this lap that we lose that car from the train anyway of uh, Darren Lund. comes through turn eight. So our third appearance of the safety car. Again, I seem to remember people on the grid saying, we are likely to have a few safety car periods. They weren't wrong. Johnny Adam then, race leader in real terms, the best of the three stoppers. And this gives, of course, the tires and brakes a chance just to recover. Less abuse being put through either under the safety car. Drive-through penalty board still being shown to 72. Will Tregertha. He has yet to serve that, so that board is still there. But again, it could be that under the safety car with limited time to be lost, that's what's going to be done. So Mark Radcliffe in the pits, loses the race lead. Darren Lung, I think, stayed out, actually. So number 91 BMW, the Century Motorsport car, still clear in the lead in quotes of the race so now with the car out of the way the uh, wave bar happens so that the lead car can be scooped up and it might change anyway because that's Dan Harper getting ready so if they can make the pit stop under safety car conditions they'll lose relatively less time so 91 BMW He's being held. That's the car that's going to pit. So now we need a different car for the race lead. And it's going to be number four, Mercedes. So in fairness, although it takes a bit of unravelling, great work being done by not just race control, but by the uh, safety car team to get the right car behind at the right point. Trying to keep an eye on the traffic, keep an eye on what's coming up in the mirror, trying to identify the right car out of a 33 strong field. Darren Lund jumped clear, Dan Harper likewise, because the Century BMW is going to be refuelled. 
And if they've got a new set of boots, this is the time to put them on. And in a way, the safety car is at exactly the perfect time, isn't it? Because you're bunching up the field with the final stint to come with all the pro drivers getting on board, certainly GT3. So it's going to make for a, a really interesting last hour of the race. Might not be the last safety car period, but it's going to be the last hour anyway. So, uh, number four takes over the lead, but we haven't got that yet behind the safety car. Johnny Adam, I think he's about 40 seconds behind that car, so uh, another wave will be released and then they'll scoop that up in due course. So Darren Lund straps in Dan Harper, the Sanctuary team ready to release the car. Of course, that was delayed earlier on by the uh, drive-through penalty that it copped. Others play catch-up. Surprised that 72 still hasn't served that drive-through, but it has not. See a bit of damage on number 11 in the background, Martin Plowman's car. I think that was with John Ferguson from reports on the message line. So let's uh, divert to GT4 for a moment. Uh, Josh Miller from Aston Martin 23 is with Steph. I'm joined by Josh Miller uh, of the 23 Aston. Now, tell us, you did start on pole position, uh, but as you can see, you guys are running pretty well still. Yeah, we're running really well. Look, we got a great start. I think managed to get five, six second gap to the cars behind, which were getting a good start off the line, and then they all started scrapping behind. So it was really positive. And then with the safety car, so we lost a little bit of our lead, but we're still fighting for it, definitely. All right, and there's less than an hour to go of the race. What are your expectations? Can you manage this pace? Yeah, definitely. I think we can. Look, we're out to win it, but you never know what can happen. We've we still got this success penalty, which we've just served, so all to play for, I think. All right, best of luck. Thanks. Thank you very much. Cheers. And all those gaps come down, of course, so the compensation pit stop times negated, really, uh, with the safety car bunching up everybody. Here over the line comes number 62. That's Will Moore. He's got Phil Keane behind him. The GT3 driver is rather eager to get on with the job, but not as quick uh, as the GT4 cars. So, at the end of the next lap, we'll see where Dan Harper drops in. But uh, the BMW, now in his hands, giving away the race lead to number four, Mercedes of Johnny Adam. So, from 33 starters, 29 still circulating. And a race full of drama. Safety car in this lap. And uh, there, the safety car with Johnny Adam behind it. So that wave there is the one that needs to catch. But down towards turn one, they come. Others being held at the end of the pit lane. So on this restart, it rather looks that there will be uh, quite a few stragglers. And amongst them will be Dan Harper, by the look of it. So what do we have? Johnny Adam leading, Rob Bell second, uh, Chris Froggart third, Marcus Klassen fourth, Sandy Mitchell fifth, Will Tregertha sixth, but with a drive-through to serve, Martin Plowman seventh, Constant Lapaline and eighth, Raffaele Marcello ninth, and Dan Harper tenth. And that ten covered by 50 seconds. That's the, the line at the moment. And in fairness, it's really nine in a queue because Dan Harper is leading the second wave. Uh, so he's got to really press on on this lap to try and claw back some of that time before we go racing once more. 50 minutes just over remain of this seventh round of the championship. Alton Park to Silverstone, to Donington, to Snetterton, to Portimao. And uh, still Brands Hatch and Donington to look forward to before the end of the season. The Donington decider always gives Plenty of drama, that's where the championship showdown has become a tradition. So there, 93, Chris Froggart getting ready to go racing. He's going to have to be on his toes to attack Rob Bell. A, a, a Rob Bell versus Johnny Adam battle is quite a tantalising one. Chris Froggart versus Marcus Clatton. Sandy Mitchell, fifth. Raffaele Marcello, ninth. His progress will be worth watching, of course. So could argue that Johnny Adam is in the pound seats. Yes, he is, very, very quick driver, more British GT titles than anyone, and rarely makes a mistake, Johnny, very, very uh, polished driver. 
but there's a lot of star names around him. And although that car kept the lead after the pit stop, the safety car hasn't helped them in as much as it's brought everybody back onto his tail. So the safety car in this time, and when the uh, safety car heads for the pit lane, it'll be up to Johnny Adam to control the pace and Rob Bell right behind. Now, remember, that McLaren ran a very long first stint. They didn't pit to put the pro driver in. Mark Radcliffe stayed out in it for quite a long time. But now, with all the stops done, there it is in second place. So it's been a, a good strategy in the end for number 27. Johnny Adam accelerates away. Rob Bell goes with him. We're back to green then. So down towards turn one in the background. Look, Marcus Clasen comes out to have a go at Chris Froggart. Sandy Mitchell comes out to have a go at the pair of them on the inside line. He's got past one. Marcus Clasen makes the Aston Martin very, 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 very wide. But Sandy Mitchell goes through, goes wide. Clasen back through on the inside, almost rubs. And the Aston retakes the place. Comes up out of turn four then in a moment, the left-hander. So Clasen retaked the Lamborghini, but Sandy Mitchell served in 10 there, didn't he? Now, what about Raffaele Marchiello? He's on the back of the McLaren of Martin Plam, and that means he's already got past Constant Lapa Leinen, his regular Fanatec GT trackmate. And there on the inside of Plowey, he goes to try to gain the place up the inside line, and he's going to get that job done as well. So through he goes. Raffaele Marchiello on the inside at six, but Martin Plowman stands his ground on the outside line. And then that's the inside for seven, but Marcello still is ahead, still does it. So that safety car period really helping number 23, negating their compensation pit stop. And in GT4, it is currently 86 Ginetta that leads, but has a pit stop to serve. So the best of the three stoppers still, number 14, BMW, Chris Solkeld at the wheel of it chased by 23, Aston Martin. But in GT3, number four leads the way. Johnny Adam trying to get away from Rob Bell, trying to get away in turn uh, from the pack behind. And there, Clasen versus Mitchell, both having got themselves up past Chris Froggart on this lap, and Sandy Mitchell goes to the inside line. The road opens up for him as Marcus Clasen goes a little bit wide. Up on the inside goes the Lamborghini, but the Aston stands its ground on the outside, absolutely toe-to-toe -to -toe out of the corner. Heading up towards the timing line, dead set level. Sandy Mitchell with his foot almost through the floorboards as he tries to squeeze every last bit of power out of the Lamborghini, almost touching mirrors as they go over the line. Look at the background, Tregertha and Marcello do exactly the same. Down towards turn one, through on the inside line goes Sandy Mitchell and Marcus Klassen gets a drive-through penalty for track limits. So the Aston Martin gets a drive-through there alongside Tregertha goes Marcello. Can't do it. Will Tregertha has still got that drive-through to serve, remember? So I'm a bit fearful that sooner or later, patience is going to be uh, lost by race control over this. Unless the team have got to argue about it, but it's unlikely to have gotten them very far. Bodywork peeling back on number 15. So Marcello rubs up against the traffic, but Will Tregertha proving to be a tough nut to crack here. Lello needs a gap on the inside line if he can do it. Heads up towards turn eight now, no way through there. Nose to tail. Now Marcello makes that move, gets the inside line, does he? Well, he's on the outside at nine, and the road will come to him if he can stand his ground over the brow of the hill into turn ten. Mercedes goes through. Raffaele Marcello has done it then. Gains the place, moves himself up past Will Tregertha. Next target is fifth place Chris Froggart, and then he'll gain another one with Classic pitting for the drive through. So there, Raffaele Marcello, still with the damage on the side of the car, comes up towards turn 15, inching up onto the back of the Sky Tempest and McLaren. In the meantime, Johnny Adam to Rob Bell, six tenths of a second it was. And as they come over the timing line now, it is seven tenths of a second. The car third in that shot is a lap down. It's number 13, Ewan Hankey at the wheel of it. So that's not really in that leading battle. This car is, and it's Sandy Mitchell in third place, and he's lapping on the same sort of pace as the leaders now. So Sandy Mitchell for Barwell, pressing on. He's got some ground to make up, admittedly, but he might be able to get there before the end of the race. So Johnny Adam leads the way, and...
So all of these cars, then three stops done, they can run to the end unless they need fuel, but it's unlikely the teams should have been able to fuel them for the last hour of the race. And so Johnny Adam leads the way. Might be a splash and dash, but we'll wait and see. But in theory, they don't need to do the regulation pit stops anymore, these cars, because they've done the, the regulation three, uh, depending on the fuel allocation and how much they've got in the tank. And whether we get another safety car period, that might just throw things up in the air at the very end. We shall see. But right now, the lead cars, all on three stops, can run to the end. back a replay of John Ferguson's car with Raffaele Marcello at the wheel making that dive up the inside and going through getting ahead of Chris Froggett so that gives Marcello fifth place there's not much of the right hand side left there's not much of the left front of Clutton's Aston Martin but they soldier on and so Marcus Clutton who's also got that drive through to serve like Will Tregerfer who has still not served it and a 30 second stop go penalty coming now to number 50 the Wallace Hart Mercedes for causing a collision. 30 second stop go penalty for number 50 for causing a collision. Well, the car was delayed anyway with a puncture. It's going to be even further delayed now. 14th it is. So uphill goes 93. So Chris Froggett still pounding on, but he has dropped back a little bit in the queue. And Dan Harper was behind him, he's jumped him as well. So there the BMW look, Dan Harper recovering, that safety car brought them back into the mix after the stop-go penalty dramas. Bit of rubbing there, look, as the Goff Wrigley McLaren falls back and past as well goes the Vaughan Meekin McLaren. Gets past one, gets past two, because it also jumps ahead of Eric Evans. So that was brave stuff, but the McLaren is a lap down on those cars anyway. So Zach Meekin is only in 28th, whereas number 61 is in 16th place. And 29 is a lap down also. Tom Wrigley has dropped off the lead GT4 lap. So there's overtaking, there's lapery, there's everything going on in GT4 right now. Number 50 Mercedes there you can see as well. That's the penalised car. That's got that stop go to do. And 72 under investigation, ignoring drive through penalty. So I've been banging on about it. And now the uh, race control message line comes up to query that. So the drive through was given, it has been ignored. And uh, you get three passings, don't you, of the timing line once the penalty is issued. So 72 hasn't served it. Big dab of the brakes going up through uh, turn nine there for number 61 of Eric Evans. Just wonder whether late race the brakes are starting to suffer a bit on the rather heavy Mustang. But he's up towards turn 13 now through that left hander. And the team Parker McLaren, again, lost time early on. Not quite sure where the time went to, but it's done its three stops to run to the end now. As still Johnny Adam leads, but Rob Bell in second place. The gap has stretched up to a second, but Rob still in touch. This would be a great result for him and for Mark Radcliffe. They got a third place in the equivalent three-hour race at Silverstone. They got a third at Snetterton in the first of the two one-hour races there. And uh, Rob Bell, who remains as quick as ever, one of the most experienced drivers on the grid. There are very few GT championships he's not raced in for McLaren over the years, but lots of experience prior to that in uh, Pano's winning his class at Le Mans, having raced Ferraris and then becoming part of the McLaren factory roster. Very, very successful driver, very much somebody you would want in your team, as is that man, Johnny Adam, who heads then up towards turn 13. Gradually, we're getting used to talking about him in things other than Aston Martins, but it was for Aston that he had that great Le Mans class win back in the uh, Aston versus Chevrolet GTE battle days. And uh, Johnny Adam leads the way, stretching the margin over Rob Bell. Through they turn. So Rob Bell heads towards the timing line. Drive-through penalty still being shown on the board for Tregerfer and also Marcus Clutton, who has yet to serve his. And Sandy Mitchell in third place is now lapping quicker than the two ahead of him. There, just going to the bottom of the shot, is Sandy Mitchell. This, Dan Harper versus Raffaele Marcello. Dan Harper, full send up the inside, goes through. Up into fourth place goes the BMW, fantastic. Raffaele Marcello doesn't often lose a place, but he just has to Dan Harper and he doesn't like it. Fights back on the inside line. Dan Harper, the BMW factory, driver does lose out. Raffaele Marciello, Mercedes factory peddler, back through on the inside line, but that was some move by Dan Harper. 
And if Raphael wasn't conscious of Dan before, he is now. So he'll try it all over again with the Northern Irish. Remember, that was a great bit of driving. Just lost out at turn three. Back through on the inside came the Mercedes and Raffaele Marciello, who did that fastest lap of the race on lap 14. Back ahead then, back up into fourth place. Harper behind in fifth, Frog at sixth. And Sandy Mitchell, as I say, is the man closing on the bell. Adam lead duo. Up the hill goes the BMW then. As Raffaele Marciello almost sort of spurred into that. Uh, trying to pull away. Two seconds stop go penalty for number 13 for a short pit stop. I have a feeling we've had that message before for the carer Hanky McLaren. So it looks like they've done it again. Uh, and therefore it's another penalty for number 13. So further disappointment comes the way of the Race Lab team. As for Ram Racing, the Raffaele Marciello, John Ferguson, Mercedes heads downhill. Dan Harper having relieved Darren Lung in the BMW is next. So the winners at Silverstone are chasing on. But Cottingham and Adam looking as though maybe a third victory of the season is heading their way. And when it's this competitive, that's quite an achievement. Lead gap 1.4 seconds. And that time around, Sandy Mitchell lost a little bit of time to the leaders. Dan Harper not close enough to launch it up the inside on that lap of Raffaele Marciello. But he's got time on his side, still 40 minutes of the race to run. The inside line there, the move comes in the traffic. And here, 93, Chris Froggart also still chasing on. Trying for all he's worth now to get onto terms with traffic ahead. So as the leaders work lap 69, race control keeping an eye on these penalties that aren't being served. Also now trap limit warning comes for Chris Froggart. That's down at turn one, and it's a second offence as well, so needs to be careful there. There is Chris Froggart, number 93, and that car running in sixth place overall, which is a good effort. So McLaren heads uphill. Laps are rather battered McLaren, which is number 11. And so downhill comes Froggart. It's Martin Plowman in number 11. In fact, it's on the same lap, I'll tell you a lie, not a lapped car on the same lap, those two. But as they uh, work their way through together, then the pair currently on lap 69. And although it is a bit battle scarred, Martin Plowman pressing on. Lead gap 1.8 seconds. Johnny Adam continues to stretch that. And Sandy Mitchell on that lap quicker than the pair. So 4.8 seconds cover the top three. So the Lamborghini in third place, the Barwell Motorsport run car, certainly not giving up. Sandy Mitchell knows that there's a chance here of maybe gaining a place, maybe even two before the very end. So there, through turn one, goes Martin Plowman, still chasing after Chris Froggart. So the two McLarens. And the safety car restart of the car that we are on board with is under investigation. So Chris Froggart's safety car restart under investigation. And he loses a place. Martin Plowman dives through on the inside, going into turn five. Doesn't go out too wide, so that keeps him ahead as they accelerate up the hill now, heading towards turn six. Blast out of the corner. And it's turn eight, but I think now, in fairness, Martin Plowman is going to be able to edge away as the cars blast over the brow. Heads through the right of turn ten, that's Chris Froggart at work. A very tall British driver, folded inside the McLaren. Drops down the hill. Climb to turn 13, down through the gears, hard through that sharp left. And then makes that run towards the end of the lap. So Johnny Adam over the line. The sister car, Phil Keane at the wheel of it, number one, is ninth. And assuming Johnny Adam hangs on to this, finally he will draw level with Phil Keane in terms of race wins. This third of the season, potentially, uh, would be number 19, and with Phil not doing the whole season, Johnny could, could, could end up the year finally ahead. It's uh, one of those talking points that Phil has 
won more races but never the championship. Uh, Johnny has won more titles but not the, the most number of race wins, but he's going to be quite one at least here. Uh, there is Dan Harper, who is still chasing after the car of Raffaele Marciello. Still not giving up, that's for sure. Harper comes now then out of turn five, climbs the hill. So together they run. There, through the traffic, but actually that Mercedes, despite losing ground a little while ago, is getting away, isn't it now? The margin stretching between the two. So, Raffaele Marciello pushing on again, pulling clear. Uphill goes 91. In the traffic, there's a chance for Dan Harper to fight back, I would have thought here, but it's not going to be that easy, uh, given the pace of the Mercedes. Most people were expecting great things from the BMW, and you can sort of see why, because it is a, a very, very strong GT3 car, had great success in the equivalent three-hour endurance races in Fanatec GT, but that 30-second stop-go penalty uh, certainly didn't do them any favours earlier on in the race. So the leaders then currently on to lap 72 and 1.9 seconds the margin. Dan Harper goes up the inside, gets through the traffic. 23 Aston still hanging on to second in class, but now Seb Hopkins is going to try and find 9.2 seconds against Chris Solkel in the BMW. His last lap was fractionally quicker. 33 minutes on the clock. There is the Aston in the background. So that's the car that's doing the chasing. But for the moment, at any rate, the BMW still has the advantage. And Chris Solkeld, again, uh, can go to the end in that car, doesn't need another pit stop. He has done the three that Century Motorsport has to do under the regulations. So there it is, number 14 BMW ahead at the moment. Chris Solkeld keeping out of trouble, taking the car over from Michael Johnston. Century Motorsport running that just as it runs the Lund Harper GT3 car. Michael Johnston only came into racing really last year through the Ginetta GT Academy. So he's uh, come up very quickly to this level. So as the leaders work lap 72, there is the GT4 leading car. You've got fourth and fifth overall on the road behind him. And Michael Johnston in danger of being caught, but it's not a guarantee that he's going to be caught. Uh, at the moment, he needs to be mindful of where much yellow is, and Raffaele very bravely goes all the way around the outside. So as long as a slower car holds its line, it is uh, OK for the leaders to, to go through. It's when the cars start jinking around that's the problem. 72 penalty to be investigated after the race. A message had just flashed up on the screen. Now, 61 Mustang into the pit lane for its last pit stop. 72 track limit penalty to be investigated after the race, we're told. So they've ignored the, the drive-through, but are disputing it, clearly. So this is the Mustang that has been in the lead of the class. This will drop it back, and therefore the what was de facto class-leading BMW is the class-leading BMW with a margin of eight seconds. But the gap is coming down, Solkeld to Seb Hopkins. And the Mustangs that did a very long first stint and then have had to do these last two pit stops into a quick succession. Uh, now drop down the order again. So uh, only now, really, when everybody's done the three stops, do you get a proper idea of who is where within the classification. So the pit lane, a lot quieter than it has been, that's for sure, in what's been a really lively race. Uh, the Ginetta in as well, serving a final stop. Another of the GT4 cars. Which one is that that's been in for a while, I fear? Is that the Tom Holland car? Yes, with Ignatia Zenon at the wheel. So that 20th when it came in. So there's still quite a bit for the officials to look at post-race, looking at the message line. There, number 14 BMW, still leading in GT4 and uh, also is the leading Pro-Am GT4. That means, of course, that it's saved. 14 seconds on its last pit stop to put it into the lead over and above the 23 Aston. Through there goes number 50, that's James Wallace in the Mercedes that did briefly lead 
during the safety car period, then had that puncture. That had a 30-second stop-go penalty as well, as out of the pit lane goes number 55, Ginetta, back into the race. So the Tom Holland, Ignacio Zanon car rejoined. Over the line goes Seb Hopkins. Now, this is the car doing the chasing in GT4. So the gap, 8.4 seconds. That time, the gap went up, in fact, by three-tenths of a second. So the lap times very evenly matched at the moment. Chris Solkeld, who knows his way around the BMW pretty well, having raced the cars for the last couple of seasons, being able to maintain the advantage at the moment. But it only takes one other car to get in the way, whether it's you lap it or you be lapped by a car, and things can change. So there, number 24, Andre Borodin, now Ollie Webb, 23rd overall. Remember, that had a spin earlier on as well. Sandy Mitchell, in the meantime, is only six tenths of a second now behind Rob Bell. So this is battle for second place, and 3.1 seconds split first to third. So the Lamborghini absolutely flying. Sandy Mitchell, in his first race here, wouldn't think it, would you? He's carving a, a, a big chunk out of the deficit to Rob Bell in the McLaren. And also, uh, of course, that lap time is quicker than Johnny Adams. Now, Johnny only has to win by a thousandth as long as he wins. Uh, and he knows that potentially there'll be time gained back if Sandy gets stuck behind Rob Bell. Rob's not going to let him pass. Sandy's going to have to work hard for that. So there is Bell. There is Mitchell behind him. McLaren versus Lamborghini. Mercedes leads the way, though, as up over the line comes Johnny Adam. That puts 74 laps in the book. Three seconds and then six tenths of a second, the margins. So 3.7 is the margin first to third. And on that lap, Johnny Adam was quicker than the two ahead, uh, two behind him. So he's just eking out the margin once more, conscious that that Lamborghini is a real rocket ship right now, bringing down the margin, bringing down the gap all the time. Turn five, they come into the hairpin. So uphill climb, Rob Bell, Sandy Mitchell, second and third. And the race leader, Johnny Adam, maintains that gap. And in fact, just on a personal best first sector on this lap. So with the car getting a bit lighter on fuel, 28 minutes to go. The only question mark over anybody now, really, is whether or not they've got enough fuel to go to the end. I would imagine they have. I can't imagine that a team have gambled on doing a, a splash and dash at the very end, unless they were gambling on another safety car and therefore thought that that would reduce fuel burn. But let's assume that everybody's going to run to the end now without the need for an extra stop, barring any problems. So Mercedes of Johnny Adam, McLaren of Rob Bell, Lamborghini of Sandy Mitchell, that's the top three. as the cars come through turn 15. Sandy Mitchell not close enough this lap to make a move. In GT4, incidentally, the number 23 Aston Martin fractionally quicker in the first sector of the lap, so that gap creeping down, but not being hacked away by the Aston. If anything, the other car to watch is the third-place Mercedes, but Sandy Mitchell under braking for turn one, closer to Rob Bell. That gap, then, is four-tenths of a second. Wants to try and get a mistake out of the McLaren, but good luck with that. Rob Bell doesn't make many of them. Climbs the hill, flicks left out of turn four. And then up towards the turn five head through which Johnny Adam will come now. So it's not a massive gap that Johnny has, but it is enough. Personal best lap last time for the leading Mercedes then, and another personal best within sector one of this lap. So he's upping his pace just in case that Lamborghini should become a threat were it to get past the McLaren. So despite the high temperatures, drivers not flagging in the heat, nor are the tyres, nor are the brakes giving up the ghost either, which is good to see as Johnny Adam powers uphill through the Craig Jones corner to Portimao, mile for turn 10 into 11, tightening right, drop downhill. And there, the race leading Mercedes on target for win number three of the season, it seems. So that's the leader, Johnny Adam, clear up front after not only his great efforts, but also those of James Cottingham earlier on in the race. Second, third, Rob Bell, Sandy Mitchell, margin between them at the start of the lap, four tenths of a second. Rob Bell doing a personal best middle sector on this lap to try to stretch out that margin. So they come into turn 15. Behind them, in fourth place, will be 
Mercedes number 15, Raffaele Marcello at the wheel. And he is not really being able to close on the cars ahead. There he is in the background. So that's the fourth place Mercedes that's sort of plateaued now. And then in fifth is Dan Harper, who briefly got ahead, but has struggled to get back and he lost time. So he's sort of fallen away just a little bit in fifth place. And then in sixth is the Sky Tempesta, no, correction, the uh, Paddock Motorsport car of Martin Plowman. Try again, it's just pitted. So Chris Frogger is up to sixth and Martin Plowman is in for a fourth pit stop. So number 11 has got a problem seemingly. Down the pit lane it has come. So here's Frogger up into sixth, but what's happening to number 11 then in the pit lane? So out of sixth place, Martin Plowman is in. Can't see anything out of the window, I'm afraid. So Martin Plowman's car, there it is, down the pit road. So gives up sixth place. Are they going to do another driver change? They've done the three regulation pit stops. It did look as though there was going to be a another change to put Mark Smith back in the car, which they didn't need to do necessarily. There, in traffic, Chris Solkel trying to squeeze past Tom Wrigley. There are different laps, those two, and he's gone through. There is a driver change, I gather, going on for number 11. Steph tells us from the pits, but other than to give mileage to the AM or to be making sure that Martin Plowman doesn't exceed the maximum drive time, I can't tell you for why. It certainly won't be as quick with the AM compared to a Pro. Uh, but a driver change is what they're doing. So number 11 is going to drop down, partly because of the time lost in the pits, as much as anything. Right, there's number 14 BMW, through shot, leading GT4. The margin, seven seconds on this lap. Maybe that's down to traffic. Last lap was a 53.9 versus a 53.6 between the two. Seb Hopkins trying everything, but it's certainly not easy to bring this gap down. Number 11 also has had fuel, so they're another example of people playing different things on the strategy and perhaps if they were banking on a safety car hoping they could get to the end could be so fuel for number 11 as well we gather from the pit lane and hence it drops down the order another car that's become a real sleeper uh, 76 it was on the cusp of going a lap down remember early on but Constable Apollinen still seventh having his first race in the Mercedes uh, having taken over from Tim Cresswick who got done for behavioral warning points but if he finishes this far up, I should think he'd be pretty chuffed with his weekend's work. 17 there, the Mercedes of Darren Burke, chasing after, as you can see, the 23 Aston Martin. So that's for second and third in GT4. Darren Burke goes through. Number 36 is currently the silver third-placed car. Josh Rowledge at the wheel, GT4 silver. And behind is the charging Will Tregurfa, who gets up the inside, puts a lap on the McLaren there. Matt McLaren had a few mechanical dramas on uh, Saturday morning in the free practice sessions, but has been as right as rain since, which has been good to see. There, third in Pro-Am in GT4, Tom Wrigley, Ginetta champion, BMW champion, and uh, with Ian Goff pressing on nicely. Those two having uh, taken honours at Alton Park in race two, and at Donington in the two-hour race. That's in overall GT4, they've had Pro-Am wins at Alton and at Donington, of course, on the back of that as well. Here is the number 61 Mustang then, which is currently fourth in silver. And Matt Cowley back behind the wheel of it. Man from the northwest of England, accelerating up towards the line. So as the field heads into these final 22 minutes, uh, in 23rd overall, Stuart Middleton taking over from Freddie Tomlinson. Back for... British GT racing after a season racing in Italy. You know, he picked up an injury when he was clipped by an incoming car in the pit lane, Stuart Middleton. But uh, it's good to have him back in the British Championship. And we'll go a lap down against Marcus Clatton. Now, that car uh, threw in ninth place, Marcus Clatton's Aston, having served its drive through, remember, for track limit offences. Incident involving number 50, the Chris Hart, James Wallace, Mercedes, and 42. Uh, James Kell, Ian Campbell, McLaren has been investigated and no further action. That's the uh, message from race control. Over the timing line there, Jack Brown and Charles Clark, the GT4 championship leaders, but any hope of a championship win, which could have been done mathematically here, I don't think it's going to happen. And you can see the damage at the back of the car when it was uh, rather rudely assaulted by Carl Cavers early on that triggered the first safety car when he ended up in the gravel. Still Rob Bell is second, still Sandy Mitchell is third as they drop once more down through turn 13 into 14 at Sargrash. 
And here is another illustration of how the balance of performance equates the cars, but then when the drivers are operating at such a high level, it's so, so hard to be able to find a tenth or so. Johnny Adam leads the way, and he has now done 79 laps with 20 minutes on the clock still. Through in second place goes Rob Bell, through for third, Sandy Mitchell, the margin half a second. Rob under intense pressure all the time, but not putting a wheel wrong. And that's what he has to do to try to hang on to that second spot. Now mindful that the Mercedes is just that little bit too far up the road. And in the pit garages, drivers that have done for the day, like Sean Balfour, Mark Sampson, occupying themselves in other ways rather than always looking at the data and always looking at the pictures. There is Sandy Mitchell in the car that Sean Balfour has been driving, the Snetterton winners. And for Sandy Mitchell, well, he wants second place, but it's not looking easy. As far as the GT4 situation is concerned, Chris Solkeld is heading up towards the line. The gap last time was down to 4.2 seconds then, so the BMW is certainly being caught. So we're keeping an eye on that and an eye on this, which is the second overall. Rob Bell on that part of the racetrack, looking as though he's got a bit further away, but then he encounters a slower car at the next corner. And so it all looks a little bit different coming down the hill once again, doesn't it? So uh, ends up being slightly impeded by the Ginetta, but uh, that margin comes right down under braking now because onto his tail comes Sandy Mitchell. So the traffic helping the Lamborghini there. This is the best chance yet, I think, for Sandy, who has a tighter line through turn 14. McLaren moves across and covers the line. Now they're back on the loud pedal. Wide is the McLaren. Sandy Mitchell onto the kerb as well. Then he can get the absolutely perfect line, clipping the apex for turn 15. And he's going to be a bit wider, but onto the pit straight they come. Now, if there is a move to be made at turn one, it starts here. Get into the toe. Try, try, try to get dragged along. Sandy Mitchell goes to the outside line. Rob Bell cuts back, and you can see that he's gained a length also on the straight. Sandy Mitchell closes under braking. And there is a drive-through penalty being given to Chris Froggart for a safety car restart breach. 93, safety car restart breach, drive-through penalty. So the race leader onto lap 81, 18 minutes on the clock. This battle for second place still rages on, as you can see. And we've also got a change imminent, I reckon, for seventh place. Phil Keane and Consul Apollina just went through absolutely together, heading down towards turn one. So Phil Keane looking for another place a little bit further back for points for Ian Loggy for the championship. So there is Sandy Mitchell. What else can he do now to try to unsettle Rob Bell? Doesn't happen very often. Uh, and Rob Bell hangs on to the place as they come over the brow, approaching turn nine. Over the brow, this is turn 10. Drop down through that corkscrew, up the other side through which the Janetta goes. There's Raffaele Marcello, who, even though those two are pretty close on occasions delaying themselves, still Marcello not able to get much closer. Nervous faces at Barwell, Mark Lambert looking on, so too Sean Balfe. Sandy Mitchell has tried almost everything in this, but he hasn't yet been able to find the answer, has he? As they come now through traffic, passing the Michael Broadhurst-driven Mercedes. Up over the timing line. Once more, they head. So through... Heads, then number 27, Rob Bell, Sandy Mitchell yet again closing right up under braking. And Rob Bell being given a second track limit warning at turn one. So it's that that might trip him up more than the pace of the Lamborghini as they swing now up through the turn four left hander. And towards the hairpin, Marcello behind. What are his lap times like? Because you kind of expect that he should be benefiting here. He's taken three tenths out last time. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's almost now got a chance of catching before the end. Phil Keane did get past Lapalina, and incidentally, did move himself through. There is the Barwell Lamborghini. Heading for a podium, seemingly, but which step? That is still up for grabs, especially with 16 minutes to go. It's still not over this fight. Far from it. As there, I head through turn nine. Johnny Adams' lead gap, though, is going up now. He doesn't have to think about defending anymore. The defence is coming from the McLaren and off the road has gone Ignacio Zanon. So the Ginetta gets going again. Rejoins then now down up to turn 12. 
and coming through with the back marking Darren Burton to say he's just splitting them temporarily. Now Sandy Mitchell gets past, and then Rob Bell has a back marker to get through as well. Right, so he's done it. There's another car there. Is that 23 Aston? It's got a problem, hasn't it? Now is that, yes, that's got involved with the Ginetta, I reckon. Look at this damage on the front of the 23 Aston Martin that's been chasing for GT4 honours. And now heading for the pit lane, number 23, Seb Hopkins down the pit lane. So he's been trying to play catch up against the BMW. We've had a Ginetta off the road. We've got an Aston with damage. I think the two things are related. And this changes the GT4 situation completely, doesn't it? Down the pit lane comes number 23. Damage on that front left corner. So the Aston Martin heads down the pit road. And presumably it is more than just bodywork damage if the car is in the pit lane. And if therefore it's something that serious, like suspension damage, then it rather looks like it could be the end of the race. The incident's in, under investigation, and it's confirmed that it was the Aston and the Ginetta. So uh, we saw one stranded, we've seen the other with damage, and it's taken a big whack on that left front corner, seemingly. So that means now that Chris Solkeld is being chased by Darren Burke in GT4, and he's got a little bit more of a gap, 6.7 seconds over the Mercedes. There in the meantime is the Aston. They're going to try to patch it up. They need to get it out there for points if they can, but there's still concern that maybe something is broken in that front left corner. They're taping up the bodywork, but it's a suspension or a, a geometry issue that's concerning the driver, hence he's brought it in. So Seb Hopkins in, and Darren Burke goes up into second in class then. In the meantime, the... BMW of Chris Solkeld's last lap was a 53.9. Darren Burke was quicker, but only by a couple of attempts, so not a big enough gain for that to be uh, of any significance as Johnny Adam comes through with 13 and three quarter minutes to go now. Heads over the line into the braking zone for turn one. He's managed to put another lap on traffic there. The two McLarens have got uh, those two behind him. In fact, battling for 24th overall, Jack Clark and Zach Beacon together. Right, the Aston back into the race, and there, look, the car it was chasing is ahead, so it basically lost a lap on the class-leading BMW with the incident and then the pit stop. Still don't think that front left wheel is quite right, but anyway, they're going to try and limp onto the end, I suspect, for points, as Johnny Adam, with 13 minutes to go, comes down through Turn 5 now. And there's the other car involved in that skirmish. Nathia Zanon into the pit lane, so that car tries to sort out its damage. That'll be investigated after the race. So with quite a lot in the system, keep an eye to the British GT website, I would propose, uh, because that's where the final outcome will be revealed once all the penalties are taken into account. So Chris Froggart serving his drive through. That brings Phil Keane up to sixth. It brings Constant Lapalina up to seventh. Down the pit road is Chris Froggart ready to rejoin there, look. So waits to accelerate away. Can't cut the white line. Behind him is the recovering Ignatia Zanon. First time out in the championship, and it's been quite a baptism, hasn't it, with that incident? So that is number 72, Will Tregertha. He's 10th, and he hasn't served that drive through, but that's now going to be looked at after the race, as is the penalty that triggered it. So Tregertha comes down through turn five, accelerates uphill with a head of him, Marcus Clatton. So ninth and 10th here, running almost together on the road. Loud pedal goes Will Tregertha, comes over the hill, and number 72, currently second of the silver amps. Chris Froggart was the leading silver amp when he made his stop, and so that puts the car now up into the lead of the class. comes Tregertha. Marcus Clatton up the road is in the Pro-Am section of GT3, but assuming that the penalty doesn't come back to Hawkman post-race, that should be a class win within the GT3 category now for the number 72 Lamborghini, Will Tregertha over the line. And Chris Froggart then is a long way back after that drive-through. Here he comes over the timing line, and Will Tregertha's 
best lap should be quicker than a Chris Froggart best lap, I would have thought. So Chris Froggart, I rather fear, is not going to be able to gain back the 10 seconds that he's lost, especially with only 10 minutes to go. So uh, Will Tregurtha ahead, thanks to that drive-through penalty. Which is a shame, because the Sky McLaren on the second safety car restart was looking really strong, but the drive-through challenge for a safety car restart breach. Uh, but again, sending in the warm-up this morning, keeping out of trouble, avoiding penalties, avoiding track limit dramas and pit stop penalties, all part of winning races. So down to turn five comes Chris Froggart. And Chris Solkeld here, still pressing on in the lead of the GT4 class. The gap is coming down, but not hugely to concern them yet. 5.8 seconds it is between the BMW and then Darren Burke behind. Not in that Mercedes, but in the white and orange and blue GT4 spec car that he has taken over from Harry George. So Solkeld for Century Motorsport up towards the line. Past him goes the GT3 Mercedes. James Wallace back at the wheel of it. There you can see in the background behind Phil Keane's silver Mercedes, the GT4 car looking far more standard. Still a great bit of kit, but far more standard than the GT3 car. And the margin between the two GT4 leaders now, 5.3 seconds. Last lap for the Mercedes. It's best of the race, that Mercedes, the GT4 car. So Darren Burke is doing everything he possibly can here to get onto terms with Chris Solkel, but it's just not happening. He's only a fraction faster, and he needs to be big fractions, full seconds faster. That is not the trade looking likely in the next nine minutes of the race. So as there, heading down through turn 12 is Rob Bell. He's now getting a driving standards flag. So third track limit warning at turn one that triggers the black and white flag another one and a drive through comes so uh rob bell now will hopefully get that message from the team and therefore keep away from curbs but there look taking as much curve as he can so he can then slingshot the car across the road diving into turn 15. so johnny adams still leads the way cars come by with 86 laps done and eight minutes on the clock. And there in traffic, Sandy Mitchell trying to get past Ignacio Zanon, and he does so, but he hasn't got to waste any time at all to Rob Bell. He's wide out of turn four, which is another part that's being monitored for track limits, so the drivers are putting absolutely everything on the line here. So, just to go back to the number 11 McLaren story, that we've seen uh, make a fourth pit stop, fuel, driver change, a bit of damage to sort out back in the race in 12th place. This is for second, and the McLaren of Rob Bell hanging on to position. Now there is Raffaele Marchiello. His last lap was quicker than Rob's, comparable to Sandy Mitchell. Despite all the damage on that right-hand side, he's still, still, still pushing on. But even Raffaele Marchiello can't do anything with his vast ability of uh, catching, it seems, Sandy Mitchell, 2.7 seconds back. He's tried everything, uh, and he's not given up trying, but it looks as though that pit stop compensation time just too great to make up, even with, of course, that final safety car period. So now you've got some pro drivers at the top of their game, not making mistakes, and very little to choose between the car performance and therefore the driver performance as well. Sandy Mitchell up out of turn 15, heads towards the line, and Rob Bell ahead of him remains stolid in that second place. Three tenths of a second is the margin between them. Uh, Marcello is trying because he's just been given another warning for track limit offences. He's second, so Lello needs to be careful as again looks Sandy Mitchell closing right up under braking, going down towards turn one. interrupted a little bit by Ollie Webb splitting the two cars as he tries to make up for lost time and Chris Solkel's last lap a personal best Naisley Harriet looks on because he is one of the sponsors of that uh, BMW Harriet's chariot as it's become dubbed and so there it is coming up over the timing line so number 14 BMW goes through and another lap down for Chris Solkel that time a 54-0 
Darren Burton behind, five seconds back. Laps taken six tenths out of him on that lap. So, a very smart century run BMW. If they can't win in GT3, can they win in GT4? Uh, the car makes the run now up through turn four, heading up the hill. The BMW, which has not scored a victory as yet within uh, GT4 outright. They did have a, a Pro-Am win at Snetterton, but not an overall GT4 victory. That could change in this race. Darren Burton's got other ideas about it. There is Johnny Adam in the traffic, being mindful of where Mark Smith's car is and where the gap might be. You can see that rear damage as the bodywork flaps when the air gets under it. Johnny Adam up to the inside line, goes through five more minutes on the clock here. Second and third and fourth places, Bell and then Mitchell. And the lead gap, 1.7 seconds. So that possibly with traffic was a slow lap by Johnny Adam. A 1.45 as against a 1.43 of Rob Bell. And Marciello doing 43s as well. So he's a little bit nearer to Sandy Mitchell. Could we be on here for things concertinering in the last few laps? I also wonder whether the two seats Mercedes might just be backing off a little to look after fuel. But that might be an outside fall because I'm sure they've got the calculations absolutely right. But Johnny Adam has worked the car hard. Out wide there goes Mark Smith. Gives away the places on track to Bell, to Mitchell, and in a minute to Marcello. So Johnny Adam it is that leads the way. Four minutes to go then. So another couple of laps after this one as up through turn eight they turn. Sandy Mitchell four tenths back at the start of the lap. And try as he might, it just does not look as though he's going to get close enough to have a proper go at Rob Bell for second position, does it? There is the Lamborghini in third spot. Raffaele Marcello having done the fastest lap of the race, remember, earlier on. climbing the hill to turn 13. Mitchell doing everything he can, but Rob Bell always has an answer. No matter what the Lamborghini tries, so the McLaren has an answer to it. So now up through turn 15, Johnny Adam, three and a half minutes on the clock. Two more laps, he comes towards the line. James Cottingham looking a little bit nervous, but he shouldn't be because they're on for a win here, seemingly barring any problems that are around the corner. And I don't think there are. Johnny Adam barely makes mistakes. Uh, and that car has been absolutely bulletproof all weekend. A third victory of the season. We've been saying how competitive it is, and it is ultra competitive. So to have three wins, that's quite something. And it would put Johnny equal on the most number of wins with Phil Keane. And that will be, if you like, a monkey off his back. He's a bit fed up with people saying, when are you going to get this win equal with Phil Keane? Well, today, finally, it'll happen. Out wide goes Mitchell, out even wider goes Marcello, and Dan Harper is behind them. Dan has dropped back, considering he did dive bomb Marcello, he's now dropped three seconds against the Mercedes, so it was a good effort in the BMW, but to no avail. And so with a lap to run at the end of this, Adam heads uphill then with second and third, still Rob Bell ahead of Sandy Mitchell, another back-marking Ginetta. There seems to be lots of Ginettas in this race, but the GT4 cars, about 10 seconds a lap slower, get lapped a lot, so you tend to see them a lot. And uh, out goes Joe Wheeler to the outside of the road, letting Bell and Mitchell go through, second and third. So as they head down the hill, out of turn 12, the Lamborghini. Again, Sandy Mitchell tries everything he possibly can, everywhere, but there's just never a proper opportunity, and Rob Bell is not putting a wheel out of line to give him an opportunity, to give him an advantage, to maybe even a hint of optimism that he could dive up the inside. In GT4, Solkel to Burt, four seconds, but I think it's job done. Chris Solkel looks as though that's going to be a win for him. Second will be the Darren Burke and uh, Harry George Mercedes. And third for GT4, potentially, Mike Simpson's Ginetta, the Toro Verde car, number 86. As over the line, on two, the last lap goes Johnny Adam. Three seconds to the good now over Rob Bell. So he's built the gap back up again. And for second place, well, Sandy Mitchell still, still, still trying, isn't he? Rob Bell, not to be denied, I don't think, for another good result for the Optimum McLaren. So they had third at Silverstone. They got a third at Snetterton. This would be 
the best of the season for Rob and for Mark Radcliffe if they can hang on to it. Raffaele Marcello is almost with them. They're now on this last lap of the three hours up the hill they had. This car has got another lap to run after the one it's on. It's the number 14 BMW. And uh, Chris Solkeld and Michael Johnston look as though a win is heading their way because although Darren Burke is close, he's not getting close enough with a lap to run. Unless Solkeld makes a mistake. Looks like they are home and dry in GT4. In GT3, though, here comes Johnny Adam. Makes the run out of turn 10, drops downhill, flips through the right, now the left, climbs the hill again. And after a really fierce fight early on when James Cottingham had to get past John Ferguson, uh, this did for Johnny Adam has been not an easy one as such, but it's been a little bit more laid back than he might have anticipated. He's had the traffic to think about, but he's been able to jump away on that restart, build the lead. And so here he comes up towards the chequered flag. It's going to be a 19th record equaling win for Johnny Adam. It's going to be the third of the season. It's going to be victory in round seven of the Intelligent Money British GT Championship for Johnny Adam and James Cottingham here at Portimao. And there, the Ginetta sheds a tyre ahead of them as it goes across the line onto its last lap. 86, that's the car that was third in class. That's Mike Simpson, third in GT4 outright. And he's had a tyre blow, as you can see, coming over the line. So very happy James Cottingham can celebrate. But no celebrations, I'm afraid, for Toro Verde. Mike Simpson and James Townsend's car sheds a tyre going down towards turn one. Right in front of the leader, he'd just come across the line. I thought for a moment it was Johnny Adam sort of breaking hard to celebrate, but it wasn't. It was the car ahead losing a tyre. Uh, Marcus Klassen versus Will Tregertha for eighth place, absolutely together as they come towards the line now. So the Lamborghini heads into the braking zone for turn 15, sets the car up, nails the throttle, comes out the other side, but not near enough to the battle-scarred Aston Martin. So Marcus Clatton hangs on to eighth, Will Tregertha ninth with this Damocletian investigation for track limits. And in GT4, they've won in Pro-Am this year. They're going to win outright, seemingly. Number 14, BMW, Chris Solkeld, with Darren Burke a bit closer, but not close enough to challenge. He's on his way up towards the line. Here they come, it's been a race of changing fortunes all the way in the GT4 battle. And the BMW is going to score class honours there. Michael Johnston and Chris Solkeld win in GT4 to the delight of all concerned. Recipe for success or something from Ainsley Harriet there. As over the line comes the BMW then to win from uh, Harry George and Darren Burke. Second in GT4 and third will now be... Josh Rowledge and Aston Miller, number 36, the DTO McLaren. So, what a race. Plenty going on all the way through it. And in the end, honours for that car, for Johnny Adam and James Cottingham's Mercedes. Of course, they came into this as the championship leaders. They're going to extend that uh, with Rob Bell and uh, Mark Radcliffe taking second. There, Chris Solkeld and Michael Johnston can celebrate their success within GT4 over the Enduro Motorsport Mercedes in second spot. So, fastest lap of the race, Raffaele Marcello, and uh, a great drive by Johnny Adam and James Cottingham, and lots to discuss. Great race. We lost one of the Mustangs late race as well. Uh, Matt Nicol Jones, 62, retired. So as Johnny Adam arrives at the P1 parking spot, Sandy Mitchell for three, Rob Bell for two. Sandy's in the wrong place there. Whoops. Need the board swapped around, I think. It's easy to try to move the cars, but uh, in the wrong place is Sandy Mitchell. No question about the winners, though. Johnny Adam clambers out of the car. He and James Cotting have made a great double act this year. And uh, a very, very happy James takes a race win and equal on record wins. Now, he's won more titles. He's now joined with Phil Keane on the most wins. Johnny Adam out of the car. Lauren Granville, the championship manager, arrives with the regulation hats. And will, in due course, usher drivers to television interview zone to podium. Johnny Adam Eventually, might get around to taking off his crash helmet here. So the Scotsman, who uh, had a season in the British Touring Car Championship before moving to 
GT racing, and it's in GTs that he's made a, a tremendous name for himself. Celebrates the win. Takes off all the extra paraphernalia that all requires these days with the hands device and the back support. Hat on. Photograph taken. And winning combination of drivers for the third time this year. James Cottingham and Johnny Adam. And uh, Steph is down there to have a word with Johnny and with James. Race winners at Portimao, Steph. I am here with the winners of uh, this fantastic race. James, we spoke earlier uh, about how uh, incredibly you were doing and what a challenge it was, but this is the third win of the season and it's got to feel good. Yeah, delighted, you know, to, to have a penalty at the previous round and then come and win is yeah, it's super rare, really hard to do. So, so, so pleased. Uh, big thank you to obviously all the sponsors and the guys who support us. And of course, two C's who've done a mega job this weekend. And finally, obviously Johnny, uh, give me the pace and, uh, you know, doing a perfect job and keeping out of trouble and keeping it in the right position. And Johnny, congratulations to you, equaling Phil Keane on the most wins. Uh, it's got to feel good. That was a, a pretty strong final stint from you. Yeah, I mean, the cars felt really good in the race there. The team have done, as James touched on, a great job all, uh, all weekend. And Graham, um, uh, James' stint was superb. You know, his, his pass on uh, Ferguson was pretty pretty special. You know, to get the lead and then pull away was what we needed for the pit stop, you know, to come out and lead. So, uh, great for the championship. All right, well, enjoy your celebrations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Top job down by Johnny Adam and James Cottingham. Uh, Johnny has had an awful lot of uh, co-drivers to bring up to pace over the years, and he does a fantastic job of it. Race results, very provisional though. James Cottingham and Johnny Adam win here at Portimao from Rob Bell and Mark Radcliffe, and then Sean Balfe and Sandy Mitchell in third. Fourth to Raffaele Marcello, along with John Ferguson, ahead of Dan Harper and Darren Lung, then it's Phil Keane and Ian Loggy. Sixth. Seventh, really good result this, really surprising to be fair. Consa Lapalainen and Tim Kreswick ahead of Matt Topham and Marcus Clatton, who got a penalty. Mark Sansom and Will Tregertha have a penalty looming over them, but Chris Froggart and Kevin Say rounded out the top ten. GT4 honours to Michael Johnston and Chris Solkeld, ahead of Harry George and Darren Burke, with Aston Miller and Josh Rowledge in third overall. The winning silvers uh, in the uh, GT4 contest were Harry George and Darren Burke, and the winning Pro-Ams, Johnston and Solkeld, who were the outright GT4 category winners. But the heroes of the day, Johnny Adam and James Cottingham. So three hours that flew by. Let's rejoin Steph. I am joined by Chris Salkeld, who has accepted multiple celebrations, GT4 overall winner. Congratulations, that's the first GT4 overall win for BMW as well. So it's got to feel sweet for you and for the team. Yeah, it's an it's unbelievable feeling. It's my first ever win in British GT. First win for BMW in the new car. It's sensational, honestly, this week. And when we came into it, when we saw the balance of performance, we never thought it was possible. But again, a huge testimony to BMW for building an unbelievable car that's got great tire degradation. So. Yeah, holding off, holding off these boys at the end was difficult, but oh, it's the best feeling in the world. First win in three years, so I'm over the moon. Massive congratulations. Now, it was really the consistency that did it for you as well, because it, the grid was turned upside down by the safety car and everything, but you held your own, didn't you? Yeah, it was one of those things. Is after, I, after the first safety car, when the second one came out, I was in the car and I knew it was going to be a long one, so I thought, let's get MJ in and use his drive time as an am to basically get that out the way quickly rather than using my time. So got him to his, got him to his drive time and then got straight back in, and then it was just pedal to the floor, push every single lap for 70-odd minutes. So I'm knackered, I'm worn out. But I've got to say a big thank you to Ainsley Harriet, who's here today, to Radix, to Food Doctor, to all the guys who supported us. This is, this is what we go racing for. So huge thank you to all of them from my heart. Right, well, enjoy that podium. Uh, and congratulations to Michael as well, wherever he is. Thank you. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not here in my arms right now. I'm sure he'll be here somewhere later. So we'll be definitely having a drink or two together tonight. So. All right, enjoy. Cheers. Come on! A long time coming, but a very popular win for uh, the... Uh, GT4 winners Michael Johnston and Chris Solkel. This is how GT4 looks if you take it as a complete entity. Uh, and it's Johnston and Solkel from Harry George, Darren Burke, Aston Miller and Josh Rowledge fourth. Tom Wrigley and Ian Goff come next. Fifth, James Townsend and Mike Simpson with that puncture on the last lap. Sixth, Eric Evans and Matt Cowley ahead of Seb Hopkins and Josh Miller. That car suffering late race with the incident with the Ginetta. Eighth, Stuart Middleton and Freddie Tomlinson that plonked itself in the gravel. Zach Meekin and Dan Vaughan were ninth. And with early damage sustained, tenth went the way of Jack Brown and Charles Clark, but well done to Century Motorsport and a first victory for Michael Johnston and Chris Solkeld. So, a very lively race, and as the drivers head for the podium, 
Let's look at the best bits of the Intelligent Money British GT Championship that began with the Miguel Ramos McLaren diving into the race lead, chased by James Cottingham. And the cars scrabble their way up through turn one with the McLaren trying to build the gap. But early on, Carl Cave was ploughed into the back of the Jack Brown McLaren, put himself into the gravel and out of the race. And that brought out the safety car and instantly triggered the strategy call from different teams. And it gave us a very jumbled order for a very brief 10 lap blast before another safety car period was required. That was a rather longer one, and when we went racing again, John Ferguson was one of the men up front, but working his way through the pack was James Cottingham. So too, Kevin Say, Chris Froggart, until that car, Kevin Say at the wheel was involved with Miguel Ramos. Ramos with damage, limped into the pits in retirement, and then more drama, that did for the Lucky Kera McLaren that had been running in that leading group on the restart, and that, after contact with 77 Aston Martin and Matt Topham, was off the road. James Cottingham had a monster fight with John Ferguson for the race lead. Finally got the job done round the outside, going into turn 13. And that put him up into the lead of the race. Sandy Mitchell was able to wriggle his way through the traffic. Great racing going on all the way through the field with the drivers heading towards the third and final round of pit stops. But up front, it was that two-seat Mercedes looking oh so strong as further back the GT4 the lead went the way of number 14 BMW. Michael Johnston giving way to Chris Solkel. They were heading for a first ever outright GT4 win as a third of the season and a record equaling 19th win would go the way of Johnny Adam with James Cottingham as his co-driver. And as they crossed the line to win, Mike Simpson's Ginetta had a tyre explode ahead, but it was still not enough to delay that Mercedes. Johnny Adam, James Cottingham, race winners, and the podium awaits here at Portimao. So the drivers come forward, and it's going to be the GT3 overall podium first. Podiums are plenty in British GT. So for third place, Sandy Mitchell and Sean Balf. Second place, Mark Radcliffe and Rob Bell. Great effort by the pair. And then race winners, James Cottingham and Johnny Adam. Got a wheel wrong by the pair of them. Excellent drive. And now the trophies to be presented. Intelligent money, very enthusiastic supporters of British GT. Sandy Mitchell and Sean Balf for Lamborghini, for McLaren, Rob Bell and uh, Mark Radcliffe. And then the race winners receive the trophies now. For the third time this year, James Cottingham, Johnny Adam win the Intelligent Money British GT Championship race, three hours of it at the Autodromo de Algarve. And the first time the championship has raced here, they make history by being the first winners then of a British GT round on Portuguese time. Champagne awaits. And inevitably, it's going to get sprayed. Who's going to win the Battle of the Corks? In your own time, chaps. Urged on by those in the pit lane. Sandy Mitchell wins the Grand Prix de Champagne. Uh, sprays everybody you can find. And lots of people in the pit lane get a soaking as well. So happy scenes on the podium. How does this make the championship look after round seven? Johnny Adam and James Cottingham extend that lead over Darren Lung and Dan Harper with Ian Loggy and... Uh, then Sean Balfe behind him. Ian Loggy, remember, soloist on those points because he's now had two different co-drivers. Sean Balfe and Sandy Mitchell are behind him, ahead of John Ferguson and Rafael Marchiello. And the currently stateside of Jules Gounon is six. Mark Radcliffe and Rob Bell seventh after that second place today. So the next stop on the calendar, Brands Hatch, then Donington to decide the championship outcome. James Cottingham and Johnny Adam came as championship leaders, leave with a greater margin. GT4 overall is next, where third place, uh, Aston Miller and Josh Rowledge are already on the podium. There for second place, Darren Burke and Harry George, and the top step to a very happy Chris Solkeld and Michael Johnston. <laughs> Trophies presented. And a great job done by the BMW drivers. First victory of the season outright. First ever for the pair in 
uh, they had a pro-am win, but their first proper GT4 victory. And Century Motorsport doing a great job of, of running GT3 and GT4 cars with uh, great success. And well done to our podium finishers in GT3 and GT4. Champagne set to be sprayed, and what a race it turned out to be. Great stuff from the Intelligent Money British GT Championship. There's plenty more to come before the end of the season with Brands Hatch and that Donington decider. Thanks for your company then here at Portimao. We'll see you next time. But for now, from Steph Wentworth and from David Addison, it's goodbye from Portugal.